Okay. Y'all, what's going on? Get in here, please. And thank you. Get in here, get in here, get in here. Listen. This episode. This episode. This one. Ooh, child. Y'all come on in and hit the like button. Please and thank you. Hit the like button. Hit the like number in the chat. Don't forget your engagement button on the bottom right hand side. Uh-huh. The circle with the emoji. Please. Send them bubbles up. Let the people know y'all in here and engaged and all that good stuff. Please and thank you. I'm so glad to see everybody. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Don't don't mind me because I am nosy. And I be hearing stuff and I be looking. Okay, I am the nosy old lady on the block. I am guilty as charged. And let me tell y'all what else happened today. I was so devastated. Y'all, please hit the like button. Thumbs up this video. Thumbs up this video. Thumbs up this video. I was so devastated today. Y'all come on. I watched this show. But before the show started, I was entertained because Lanethia Monique Leakes is giving us a show without editors, without production, without a network, without a camera. Baby, Lanethia Monique Leakes is giving us a show on regular old social media. I mean, the whole show is happening outside of the show at this point. Like at this point, uh, I'm starting to believe that our HOA is wherever the hell Lanethia is because this girl is giving us a show. Now, y'all know we talked about and we showed her live telling us exactly what Portia did to her. And y'all know I said that's what she get. And I mean it because Portia lied on you before. So you should have been prepared and you should have never been buddy buddy with that helper. And you wouldn't have got your feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. However, baby, Lanicia, with her crazy tail, done decided since Portia pretending like you upset about the ashy toe knuckle Easter suit man that Nene going with hanging around Simon and she having to say, I ain't been around him. He is. So I guess Lanithia say, well, now I am going to hang around it. So now we got pictures. Now, those of y'all who saw what I posted on the community tab, you already seen it. I was rolling. Okay. And then she was in the comment sections, honey, because somebody said that um, Nene don't owe her nothing after her trying to stop a bag because that's exactly what Portia tried to do was stop a bag. That um, she don't owe her nothing but a behind whipping. And honey, Lanithia say, say it again for the people, for them slow people in the back. I said, oh, so I have all, I was already entertained for the day. Like it's been so long since we've had this kind of entertainment out of these ladies. I mean, seriously. So I was thoroughly entertained before I started watching this show. And y'all, we're going to talk about everything that happened on this show. It was a lot that went on. But let me tell y'all why I was devastated. I'm about to greet everybody. Y'all come in, like this video. Thumbs up this video. Use your engagement button on the bottom right hand side. Make sure you put your like number in the chat, please. And thank you. OK, but let me tell y'all why I'm devastated. I broke a nail, tore it up, and I don't even know when I did it. I don't know when I did it. I think it was while I was watching this show. I think I laughed at something real loud and I shouldn't have when they was picking at them people with them terrible fashions on. And that's when I think I broke it. Oh, it hurt my heart so bad. Why does it hurt so bad? Why does it feel so sad? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm so hurt by that fingernail. Like, I'd rather have all my nails off or all of them on. It's something about that one broke nail that do something to my soul. Okay, so y'all give me emotional support and positive energy like spirit fingers at your screen, wherever you are, because I'm so hurt right now. It ain't gonna stop no gossip though. Ray Ray all day. Thank you for being like number one. We got Bianca the Beautiful in the chat. All right. We got her reminding y'all to get your drinks and hit that like button. Thank you, gorgeous. We got C Mays in the house. Hey, boo. How you doing? She's number four. She dropped by to hit the button. She got the roll, but at least she remembered us. Okay. And I appreciate it. We got Magdalene. Hey, sis, she done hit the button. She number four too. Yolanda Franklin is like number five. Hey, sis, how are you? So glad to see you. Kiko. Hi, like number five. 
are is this your first time live just as a reminder if this is your first time in my live stream on this front porch where we be gossiping and stuff please put first time live or fdl in the chat so that we can welcome you appropriately because we like to welcome folks around here if this is your first time kiko welcome okay please let us know in the chat katrina taylor's in the house she like number six hey now miss thelma is here hello hello how are you y'all remember please hit that like button we got christina with the t and she's like number nine i appreciate it queen of hearts ks is in the house at like number 10. all right dr j 1913 miss carmen san diego herself like number 11. this girl can't stay put honey she all over the globe she everywhere so i can't get that time back i suffered un until under the bridge showed up yes Sister Underbridge showed up, and I'm sorry, but Sister Underbridge seems to be a very sweet lady. She does, to me. She seems to be very, very sweet. I like her. I, I may not always, you know, be on the side of her wigs, but I like Sheila. I do. Hey, Miriam St. Fleur, how are you? Thank you for being like number 11. It's Country Girl Queena in the house at number 13. Thank you, girl. My girl, Jackie Gaines, is number 14, and so is Tracy Lashley. Y'all hit it at the same time. Hey, girl. Hey, Miss Gardner. That's my sis. How are you? She's like number 16. I appreciate you. Okay. All right, generous soul. Congratulations on your three months royal anniversary. I hope everybody had a good weekend, too. It was raining here. Like, I was, little, I was sitting here like, do I need an ark? Should I be gathering animals two by two? Um, the rain has been, the rain has been raining. The rain has been indeed raining. Okay. We got fresh strawberries in the chat. Hey, boo. How you doing? Oh, you a little sleepy. Well, this show was a little sleepy too, up until around about the end. It was some things happened though. Hey, Auntie Eva, we glad you made it. Thank you for being 21. Renee Six is in the house. Hey, girl. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Renee, thank you for being number 24. I appreciate you. I do, I do. Delicia Dismucus in the chat. Hey, sis, how are you? Angie, girl. Hey, boo. She said, hey, Kim, folk. I like you. Miss Sparkle, our resident Mary Kay lady. This is my sister. She's like number 24. Girl, me and you got the gossip. I got to call you. I got to call you. Okay, Callie Harper is here. Happy Sunday. Listen, I don't mind. I kick it with y'all no matter what. No matter what. We down. We down like four flats on a Cadillac. Deborah Randall is here. This is my good sis. It is not legal to talk housewives because we don't talk housewives until the Deborahs have arrived. We got Deborah Randall and, De and David Garcia. She's number 26. Thank you. Thank you. So y'all know we legal. It's going down tonight. DS in the house. We know she here to run the corner like number 26. My good sis, Carrie Amuneke, is here and like number 31. How you doing, Kenya330? Good to see you. Number 33. Hey, cool gamer. Always cool. Always in the building without fail. And I appreciate it. Alfreda Miller Walker. Hey, sis. She 33 too. And so is Angie Girl. All three of y'all hit it at the same time. Okay, trifecta. All right, hat trick. I like it. I like it. He, he, Ellie, L is here. Crazy self. I love you. Duchess Natalie made it. Thank you for being like number 43. I appreciate you and I'm glad to see you. All right. X is in the house. X, you, you was in Zoom with us the other night gossiping and you fell asleep, girl. You fell asleep on the gossip. Child, those of y'all that didn't make it, y'all missed it because I had to spill. I had to tell everything I knew. It was some uncomfortable information, but I did not withhold. And those of y'all who were present, y'all know I did not withhold anything. I told everything I knew. Hey, Lady T, thank you for being number 46. And Janetta Porter in the house. She's number 45. Okay. All right. Dana Brown is 52. I appreciate it. My girl in the case made it. Okay. Thank you for being 29, sis. All right. Girl, Portia was dead wrong. She was. And Nene shady as hell. Hey, M. Guerrero, child, Nene tickled me today. I say, well, 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 what you do, what you do. Lovable Lisa, we glad you made it, sweetheart. Thank you for being 45. That's my girl, Miss Kaiser So Say. Child, we was talking about Club Crown over there on Twitch the other night, and I thought about you. Hey, Krista Jones, thank you for being 17, boo. 
Deborah's 55. All right, I like it. I like it. Miss Kaiser So says 56. Look, y'all get in here, please. Like this video, share this video. In case anybody else want to sit up, laugh, and kiki with us, I sure appreciate it if you would. I know you made it. Jay Darkness. Hey, boo. Thank you for being number 59. Yeah, Tracy, it don't feel right to that nail get fixed. You know I'm going there tomorrow. High speed, chase style. DV, thank you for being number 62. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Virtual hug for the broken nail. Child, that fashion show was hideous. Baby, and then they had the necromancer in there. And the necromancer was kissing up, talking about real fashions. Child, when I tell you, if anybody should have pulled a charade, it was them. They shouldn't have showed up with those fashions. I know. Thank you for being number 50. Nikita T. Hey, sis. How you doing, gorgeous? Thank you for being number 66. We got my my beautiful niece. Couture Bay is here. It's like number 69. And listen now. Kiko says this is her first time live. So y'all better be spamming that chat. Saying welcome to Kiko. And I don't see this, I don't see the chat being spammed. Let me make sure I'm seeing right because I don't want to be. Yeah, this is her first time live, and I need y'all to spam this chat with welcome. And I mean welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, because this is what we do. We welcome folks. Hey Tay, how you doing? Catherine Bennett in the house. Hey, my love. We got little Maggie. Girl, I'm over this season too. I'm over it too. I done had it. I feel like this is the longest housewife season in the history of all the franchises. I'm over it now. I done had enough. Angela Davis, thank you for being number 74. I appreciate you so much. I love you more. Child, the show was sleepy, but you know I'm going to give you all the messy bits. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I am. Ray Ray all day say she back. All right, all right. My boo all the way from the UK, Akua, I'm that girl. She's number 77. Glad to see you. Okay, I see the welcomes hitting the chat. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure we welcoming people appropriately. So here are the ground rules before we get going. One, say a silent prayer for my broken fingernail because it is tragic, okay? Two, we're going to keep our comments to the people on this show and the people that's on our screens and the people that's on our social media and not each other because that ain't what we do, okay? Next, even if we disagree, we're going to do it respectfully because tongue and teeth fall out. Kin folks do not, and that ain't what we finna do up in here either. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure that you put your like number in the chat, okay? Use your engagement button. I don't care what bubble you send up. If you want to send up a mad bubble, send up any bubble you want, but let them know y'all in here. And if anyone is new, if it's a face you've not seen before, say welcome. If you're new and this is your first time, please put FTL for first time live in the chat so we can welcome you because we about to get rocking. So if I miss anybody, y'all know I like to greet absolutely everyone. I've had people get upset with me for it. Y'all know I don't care. Y'all know Neat don't care. Okay. Because I like to greet people. I like to be kind to people. And some of y'all know a little bit about my story. And some of y'all don't. I didn't um, come up in a situation that was always the kindest, okay? I grew up with people who are like storybook evil, honestly. So for me, I have always been so grateful to anyone who has been kind to me. And so I like to be kind to other people. I grew up in a family with people that did not welcome you. They would only half smile at you and say evil, nasty, awful things, lie on you and everything else. So I want this to be an environment where even though we just come in to kick it and have fun and talk and gossip, that everybody feels welcome. Nobody should feel like they're being tolerated. No one should feel like, oh, you know, I'm hanging out with these ladies. But the minute, you know, we get off live, they're going to call each other and talk about me or anything like that. So I don't want that type of energy in here. So make sure that y'all are welcoming people, that you are greeting people, that you are being kind to people, because that's what matters. Any any type of unkindness, unpleasantness, y'all know I ain't going to tolerate it. 
So make sure y'all being sweet, okay? That's all I'm saying. Hey, Kelly Dream, thank you for being number 84. All right, all right. Miss Peach is in, always in the house. She 82, thank you. Miss Nisty coming in at number 81. I like it, I like it. Priscilla Clemens, hey boo. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being like number 89. We got our girl Delightful by Design. She number 83. All right. So look, we finna get into this gossip. Mm-hmm. We finna get into this gossip. Okay. Jabrett Williams, welcome. She said kindness goes a long ways. It does. It does. I'm telling you, you never know who you're being kind to. You could be being sweet to somebody and you never know that this person might be able to help you in the future some type of way. So just be kind, like even if they can't do nothing for you in the future, just be kind because you just never know who you're entertaining at the moment. So just always be kind, always be cool. You don't have to be ugly. Like there's no reason for it. So yeah, we ain't doing none of that around here. Y'all know how we roll. We crack a joke. We don't, we don't do no line, no signifying. Okay. And, and for the most part, we stay on code. Okay. Now case, yes, we blessed to have each other. Okay. You say that's the reason you subscribe because we welcome you. I'm glad because we're going to do that around here, honey. We're going to do that around here. We ain't going to have no ugliness because I feel like if you act ugly long enough, it's going to show up on your face. Mm -hmm. I could tell y'all a story or two, but I ain't. Brandon Martin. Hey, thank you for being number 85. He said the runway show was hideous. What fabric did they use? Baby, they got that from the back of Joanne's. In the clearance section where they be giving away stuff. That's where that came from. My sister on the phone and tapped me in. Let me see what this crazy girl talking about. Ain't no telling what she didn't see. Lord, I be scared when she start. I get scared. I does. <laughs> okay, she just let me know she showed up. Whew, we safe for now. Child, them clothes was bad. They definitely got it. Child, they say by the end of this month, it should be over. And then we should be getting into the um, reunion. Thank God, because I can't take too much more. This was a lot. Lady T say, always be kind because you never know where your blessing will come from. Okay, you don't never know who you treat, and you know, so treat people right. You don't know who you treat. Okay, you say that fabric, fabric remnants was you. <laughs> there could have been some remnants. Those could have been some remnants. Okay, Queen of say she had to stop watching. So let me tell y'all, look. We just gonna dig into this episode because y'all, this was this was quite frankly a mess. This was a mess. This was a mess. If I ever seen a mess, it was a mess. It was, but it was some stuff too. Oh, it was some stuff. You know, closer to the end, they gave me my life at the end. At the end, they gave me my whole life. Because y'all know I like foolishness. I do. I do like a little foolishness. So let's get into this thing. So we started off the episode with the little short clips. I already know when they start off episode doing a little short clip of this person, short clip of that person, more than likely, it's about to be a lot of filler. Tutu, for your info, hey, thank you for being 91. Girl, I know you don't watch it, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Okay, I got you. Kelly say the fabric came from Hobby Lobby. You know what? Walmart be selling cheap fabric too now. They might have got it up out of there. I don't know. I don't know. Let me tell y'all what happened. So they started off with the little short clips. Let me get my water. They started off with the little short clips. And um, the little short clips they were showing was, um, what's your, what's your who's it? <laughs> M. Guerrero, she's not gonna let them make it. We just get started. M. Guerrero already is into these. Is already into these ladies. She's into them. Um, so we started with Wendy talking about the talk show. Then we get a quick shot of Karen and Ray at the cardiologist. Which was um an update, but you know, that's not real like drama, you know, because what she was saying from the beginning was like a 5% um, build up, 5% occlusion, like nothing serious. And um, so that was nothing serious, but apparently they're saying that 
they see no significant plaque and they said that um that the plaque was elevated but i guess whatever was elevated or whatever's been reversed or i don't know but basically it sounds like she's doing better and she's gonna stay on course to make sure that this does not become a problem like i don't want to say that that's not important we do know that heart disease is a significant killer of black women so i'm never gonna play like that's not a big deal that is a huge deal okay it's just not dramatic it's not gossip it does not a show make so i'm very happy to hear that she's doing better i want her to continue to do better we want her to stay alive a long time we love karen okay with her crazy self so i'm real happy about that hey boo is that my jenna harris yes it is how you doing darling yeah that's good for karen's sake but i was like this ain't tv so when i get those little short clips you know before we go into it we don't just go straight into a scene i've always got my guard up like okay is this about to be one of those filler episodes y'all the yawning is back maybe i need to get another bag of hydration or something hung i don't know or maybe i need nutrients i don't know but i'm working on it so y'all please overlook me if you see me like do that it's i'm not bored with y'all it's my health is a little wonky okay so anyway we get that then we get to giselle and ashley with these tacky clothes and um ashley starts um oh nick case thank you for the super chat she says stay blessed my beautiful uh, my beautiful sister shanitra and she says go go well thank you sis thank you 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 a thousand times thank you that is so sweet i appreciate it my first supporter today and my sister sent me a nice super chat i appreciate that that's what's up hey vet all the way from birmingham uk you just in time we just getting started girl okay i love my girls from the uk and my guy tom g so look so Ashley starts talking about, um, hey, Shani, thank you for being 94. Ashley starts talking about, um, you know, all the stress they had with the designs. And I'm like, the stress you had with the designs and picking fabrics. And they click to this one scene with them rubbing on some fabrics in a store. You're hey vet thank you for being number 96 it, it did something to me because i'm trying to figure out what was the stress in you walking in the store and rubbing fabrics one you're not the designer you're not the seamstress you have no understanding of fabrics you're not they didn't even bring even to try to make it realistic they didn't even bring like a sketchbook of the designs with them to the fabric store to say okay this piece i want to see in this fabric but let me check it and see, like, is it breathable? Does it stretch? Like, is it does it only stretch on the bias? Like, what about this? Like, is it water resistant? Like, is it a good fabric? Does it feel coarse? Is it soft enough? Like, we didn't get none of that. And I'm like, okay, I understand. Everybody wants to holler about they want to sell fashion, but God darn it. Just drop ship your stuff from China because we don't need any more of this charade foolishness. Sheree Whitfield, I blame you for all of this because this did not happen before Sheree. Um, Jay Darkness say everything was literally a few weeks ago. Absolutely. And she's like months and months. And I'm like, girl, y'all did some stuff you threw together at the last minute. It looks like you had somebody from your, your cousin's home ec class in high school put this mess together. DT in the house. Hey, I love my boo. How you doing, my love? I'm glad you're here. DT and DS going to run that reflection corner, okay? Because I know I can't trust y'all not to act up. Jen say, the way these beige beddies are so fake, it makes my brown eye itch. Oh, oh, not the brown eye. Baby, don't it make your brown eye blue? Yeah, I blame Sheree for all of this foolishness with these people with this fake fashion talk. I'm so over it. Must we pretend? What must we pretend? Sheree did this to us first now if we recall at least the first go round, she was you know saying she was going to work with michael knight lord rest the dead and michael was super 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 talented we first saw him on um project runway and he was absolutely amazing 
And when she first looked at fabrics, it was him bringing stuff to the house, talking about the actual designs and what would look good with each one of those designs and stuff like that. Hey, Jen Jones. So yeah, that was the thing. But then we get Ashley talking about stressing over designs. I'm like, girl, stressing over what designs? Which designs were you stressing over, ma'am? Because which ones were you designing? Which ones were you constructing? Lord Jabret say, how, how dreadful. Girl, I agree. I agree. How dreadful. I'm trying to make this light do what I want it to do. And so I agree. I'm like, child, how dreadful is that? We got to deal with this foolishness with y'all pretending that y'all are designing clothes. That ain't going to work either. Because I don't like lights in my eyes like that. I really don't. Mm -mm. Like I need to see it. I need to see my notes. That's the problem, y'all. I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure I see my notes. But y'all know my eyes ain't what they used to be. Um, so we just going to do it like this. So she talking about picking fabrics and stuff. And then what we see them dealing with is this shiny zip up. It was like some pink, shiny. It looked like fabric for like a, a, a sheet set. And it was this zip up situation. And the guy's like, oh, you want it? You want us to draw it in in the middle? And I'm like, what do you mean? What are you saying? It was just like it was so performative. It was so performative and full of crap. Like y'all are not designing anything. And I'm just, as somebody who lives, breathes, and eats by her sewing machine, it's so it's so dreadful to watch. DT say dealing with designs. Meanwhile, the designs look like they were drawn by an otter swimming in sewage. Lord, DT is back. DT is back. Auntie Eva said, where's Dwight when you need him? Child over there at the Purple Door Salon in Atlanta, Georgia, trying to close himself because I just seen him today. Okay. Catherine said that horrible bed sheet. It was absolutely a horrible bed sheet. Absolutely horrible. But yeah, that's what they did. And that's, you know, that's what they gave us and claimed that it was fashions. I said, well, here we go. Here we go with the foolishness. So then we get Mohawk and Mongoose, all otherwise known as the necromancer and her Mohawk wielding husband, okay, who always wears high water scrubs. I still want to know where the hell does he find high water scrubs? And do he own any clothes that ain't scrubs? Do he own any pants that are not high waters? I have questions that need answers. Where did you get high water scrubs? Do you own clothing that's not scrubs? And do you own any pants that are not high waters? I'm so tired of his pants, like licking the top of his ankles. I'm, I'm over it. Alpha Charm, thank you for being 98. I'm sorry about the notifications, my dear. Miss Guer M. Guerrero said, it just screamed cheap and rushed to have a fake fashion, a fashion talk like how you said. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Jenna said, Auntie, we got 12 years. Can we work to make my birthday, my baby, a 16th birthday dress? Absolutely. I'm hoping she'll let me dress her like Princess Tiana and have a NOLA theme. That would be a tool. Y'all know I'm in the Pretty Black Girl fan club. I'm a fan. If you're a, if you're a pretty black girl, I'm your biggest fan. I promise you I am. Jen Jones said, not high water scrubs. Yes, that's what he had on. So we get them over at the um, fertility clinic, okay? I'm assuming that's where it was, the doctor's office, whatever. So they're going for IUI. Um, delightful say necrosis's um, confessional look looks scary tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. DS says his pants go any higher, they'll be a part of Jermaine Dupree's collection. Lord, not boss baby. Not boss baby. Tell me we're not going to boss baby, Lord. So listen, so they in there. Um, like I said, he's still in them high water scrubs. They go to collect his genetic material in the bathroom. That's as much as I'm willing to say. Um, and she talking about it's not what she imagined. I'm not sure what she imagined it would be. They collected. They came out. Dr. Um, I guess Famuyiwa, Famuyiwa actually did the insemination. She went ahead and inseminated um, the necromancer. And now the Mohawk tells the mongoose that the ball is in your court. Now, on my end, I don't think that bodes well for her. And I'm going to say this. I don't have a whole lot of commentary for her because I simply don't respect you and I don't like you. 
So when I don't like folks and I don't respect them, I don't have a lot of commentary because I just don't care. But I'm going to say this about that ball is in your court comment from Dr. Mohawk, Dr. Ankles. Necrosis had better watch herself because with him making that comment is giving one, he didn't want to do it. He acquiesced eventually, right? So now if she don't turn up pregnant, they're going to blame it all on her. And I hope she knows that. And I hope she got a plan B. Anissa, thank you for being 100. I, I don't know. I don't know, baby. I don't know. I don't. But she needs to be careful. Oh. Okay. I'm just saying, like, just be, th be, she needs to think about it. She needs to really think about it. Hey, Rochelle, thank you for being number 102. Yolanda says, necrophilia seems to be forcing Ike to impregnate her. Nah, that ain't what's going on. There's pressure for her to come up with a baby. And I understand it. I respect it to a certain degree. However, when he made that comment, Melanated Energy, thank you for being 104. When he made the comment after that insemination that the ball was in her court, my spidey senses went up and I'm thinking, okay, girl, I don't like you, but heads up, you need to watch your back because that ball is in your court situation. It's giving me, if it don't go right, if a baby is not forthcoming, if this is not an easy process, if you have to go back too many more times, he is going to blame you for your childlessness. She needs to keep her eyes open. Instead of watching Wendy, being obsessed with Wendy, she better be watching that man. Because something tell me the cheating rumors and all that stuff, that might be the least of her worries if she can't turn up with a baby. She better watch him. She better watch him. I know she. I know y'all say he talked to her. She talked to him crazy. She kind of do. But at the same time, I just feel like she better watch herself. Angie girl, it was her idea. Remember she said that he wasn't really with it and he eventually agreed to it. So the fact that he wasn't with it and agreed to it. And if that baby don't show up, if that baby is not forthcoming, I feel like she better watch because him and him and his family is going to start blaming her for their childlessness. Even that, that cousin of his that she think like her so much, she going to probably be the one leading the charge. I'm just telling you because I know how these things go. She's going to be sitting there like, Lebe, even you, yes, even her, especially her. That same one smiling in her face going to be the one leading the charge if she don't turn up with a baby. Hey, Monica Jones, thank you for being 105. Okay. So anyway, moving along, we get Mia and G in front of this counselor. Now, this is the one we saw on the sneak peek. Y'all remember where they went in there or whatever, and we saw on the sneak peek what she told that story about Gordon emptying out her bank account when she said she wanted a divorce. Now, I told y'all, I didn't believe it. And I'm telling y'all again, I don't believe it. I even went and found the audio from the first time they went with her mentioning about the divorce and him saying he wasn't even aware of her filing the divorce. So I'm like, so is it that he didn't know or he did know? And if he didn't know or... Or if, he, or if he did know, and he sat in front of that counselor and said he didn't know, why wouldn't you correct it? Because you talked for everything else. And if he didn't know, how could he enter your bank account when you filed? I'm confused. Kelly say, I just don't see the connection between those two. They are never in a scene longer than two minutes together. Child, they barely in a room more longer than two minutes. From my understanding, because she said he work out of town, so I don't think they spend a whole lot of time together anyway. Lala in the house. Hey, boo. And she reminded y'all, hit that like button now. I'm just saying. Make sure y'all thumbs up this video. Share this video. <laughs> I know what you're doing, Ray Ray. <laughs> so if the necromancer don't get pregnant, she could be considered cursed? No, she would not be considered cursed. That's Everything is not a curse when it comes to West Africa. Everything is not a curse. But... She needs to be careful because quite frankly, that ball is in your court comment made me extremely uncomfortable. I'm just going to be honest. I didn't like it. I was like, my antennas went up and I hope hers did too. So then we get to Wendy 
I'm sorry, not Wendy. Mia, back, back to Mia and Gordon. So they sitting in there. This is the scene we saw on the sneak peek where Mia tells the story about Gordon emptying out her bank account for filing for a divorce. I told y'all after we saw this the um sneak peek that um I just don't believe it. I played the audio from episode five where they told a completely different story. And I find it funny that when Mia told this story, she didn't say it in front of the counselor. She waited until she was in the um she waited until she was in the confessional where G really couldn't like rebut or say anything because he's not in that confessional with you how does he know what you said in a confessional i don't know all of that just kind of because we know how bad mia lies i just simply couldn't believe it vanessa says g needs to be need to be careful because the whole that's abuse comment mia made is dangerous yeah he checked her he did welcome vanessa if this is your first time please put ftl or first time live in the chat um duchess natalie says that marriage screams arrangement absolutely absolutely it was an arrangement for mia but not for gordon gordon thought that girl liked him mia liked your money and i don't feel sorry for gordon i'm gonna say it a thousand times over you left the wife of your youth for a girl from the um evening gown lobster and steak strip club where you ran barefoot to give her ten thousand dollars for a conversation and she put her foot in men's chest according to her so you left your wife for that this is what you got sir Nothing against Uncle G. I think he's all right type person, but you you bought you the architect of your own trouble, sir. I have no pity. Maybe later, but right now I just don't. You're gonna have to show me something to make me pity you. Emma Crawford is 109. Thank you. So yeah. And Callie says she don't think G recognizes realizes how much of a liar Mia is. I don't think so either. I don't think he quite gets the danger of how much she lies and how vicious she will get with her lies. I don't think he gets it either. Um, Deborah say, for some reason, I thought G was retired when we met him three years ago. Mm -hmm. He had installed her as CEO. Did I get that wrong? The problem is she was never the CEO. She claimed she was the marketing person or whatever now. But at the time, that was the story that she was telling. So apparently she just be lying. Gordon first wife is having the last laugh. Yes, she is. Oh, yes, she is. Okay. So any in any event, so they did that whole thing and they sitting in there talking to the therapist about the divorce and Gordon saying that was never on the table for him. That's what Mia had in mind. That was never what he wanted for himself or his marriage or whatever. And see, Miriam, Miriam for the win. Miriam says, how can he take money out of her account unless it's a joint account? Right. The story just, when you start picking through Mia's story, it never adds up. Brandon Martin said, whenever they show G and Mia, she looks like she don't like him, probably wishing she was with her boyfriend. Probably. Probably. But Mia lies so much, you know, like, I don't feel bad when I don't believe a liar. I don't. Y'all, Emma Crawford, go check on DS in the corner. Just go check on her. Make sure everything is okay in there for a good 30 seconds because I can't. So they're in there talking, and um, he said it wasn't ever him. Mia at line still, oh, I'm completely committed. We already know that's not true. So it's crazy, it's it's crazy watching her say. She's completely committed to this man when we already know in real time, you already had a man. You was already messing with that man. Gordon had already blasted you out, put you out about this man. And Karen then told that she knew about this man. You've posted this man not on social media. Girl, you committed to Gordon. <laughs> anyway, so um, then she pulls that you know, I was committed, but you were being combative and you were aggressive and I'm not going to deal with that. She came with her little orphan Annie story again, you know, because I was in foster care and I had to deal with that stuff. And I'm not going to deal with that now that I'm grown. And I'm like, girl, here we go again. You gave us little orphan Annie 
when it was you versus Candace, it was a little orphan Annie when it was you versus Wendy and your skin because you didn't have a mama. Now it's you, little orphan Annie, now that you're trying to set up this story against Gordon because you already knew you were going to leave him. You just needed us to see, like, oh, see, this is the reason I tried. No, you didn't, girl. You just be lying. So um, it was around that time she told that story about him draining a bank account and nobody should go through that you shouldn't do that to anybody male or female blah 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 she's still trying to set up this this story that he was abusive now she's trying to sell the story that he was financially abusive so i said okay mia here, here we go so they talk about intimacy and she basically says that gordon a romantic his version of romance is not really romance or whatever like that and i said okay cool that's an old man. How much romance you thought you was going to get from an old man? Okay. And then child Uncle G say she don't have no romance either because he say she get in the, on, in the bed and she be on her phone and on social media and say when he try to hug on her and stuff, she act like that. What it, what was the word he used? Because I like to use the right word. He said like, he didn't say burden, but he said, um, did he say pestilence? Did he? It was some word he used, basically saying that she act like she act like he bothering her if he try to hug up on her and stuff. I say, I said to myself, "Yep, you are bothering her. She don't want you hugging up on her, <laughs> Uncle G. She don't want no hugs. She don't want you. You know, we ain't gonna talk about the sponge because you know some of the ladies was with us in Zoom and we all know about that sponge." Some of us was in there and we, we discussed the sponge. Mm -hmm. Mia don't want to be hugged by the sponge. And I'm going to just leave it right there, honey. If you know, you know. So anyway, the therapist tell them, you know, um, <laughs> y'all look at each other, tell each other what you need. <laughs> and so... He was like, you know, he just want to be loved and heard and blah, blah, blah. But he said, basically, they already good. And relationships, people go through stuff and change is constant. You know, like he was reading off for, um, a Hallmark card or something. I don't know what Uncle G was doing, but that's what he said, right? <laughs> what is the parasite, Dr. J? What is the parasite? I'm done. So look, hey, Anna, I just saw you. Yes, a plague. That's what he says. She act like she, he's a plague, like like she's like he's plaguing her by trying to get um, affection or attention from her. So and then she talking talk about that man ain't um romantic. He, you won't let him be romantic because you don't want to be hugged by the sponge. <laughs> Woo. But I'm going to let that go. I am. So anyway, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. So anyway, oh, Anna, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Yes. Thank you so, so, so much. Right, Yolanda say Mia is making excuses to leave. That is exactly what she is doing. She's making excuses to leave, okay? That's what she's doing. So they, they said that we never heard what Mia say she need from him because Mia was sitting there, Daniel, rolling her eyes the entire time, which was mildly amusing. I ain't even gonna front. I was chuckling. Just a smidge. I was chuckling. Okay. Hey, chubby girl cuteness. And so that was that scene. Then we get Candace talking to her therapist. I'm like, so everybody going to therapy today? At that point, I said, okay, I don't know if the whole episode is filler, but it's giving me y'all filling it up with something. So we got Candace talking to her therapist, Dr. Ken. He come by the house for a house call. Excuse me. We get the flashback that this is the same therapist that her and Dorothy was seeing when we found out that Dorothy had busted upside her head with that pocketbook. Huh. Which will always be funny to me. That is never not going to be funny. 
That is always going to be my girl because back then I could not stand Candace. Candace was disgustingly disrespectful to her mother while acting like she was entitled to her mama's money. So I was real cool with Dorothy who had been trying to talk to this girl and talk some sense into her about marrying this mangy poor person with three children and two baby mamas and back child support. And so much so that she's going on TV pretending like, oh, her mama's so mean. She's so unreasonable. Oh, poor me, bad mommy. I was on Dorothy's side. I say, whack her. Whack her, Dot. Whack her. Right upside her head. She made me happy. That was, it was, I'm telling you, I remember that episode. So when they gave the flashback, I was like, that's when I fell in love with Dorothy. I always knew I liked her, but it was at that moment that I truly, truly, truly knew. I love Dorothy. Dorothy is good people. I like her. Yes. And so that was the same therapist. And so she telling him about her and Chris and that baby conversation they had. Y'all remember like maybe last episode, the episode before where she's talking about going on tour and he, now he's telling her you ain't hardly around and then he want to mention about a baby. And like I said, and like some of y'all said, Candace stupid as hell if she have a baby by that thing. Because if she ever decides to leave, the first thing he going to do is try to get custody of her child, claiming that she don't have time to raise it so she so he can beg for child support. So he can live off of that and use her child support to pay the child support for the mother children. Okay? Y'all know I do not trust men who don't work and make money. He is not to be trusted. He is a flea or a tick. I can't figure out which, but he's one of them. He's one of them. That's why all of a sudden he won't talk about a baby. Candace so stupid. She up here crying, y'all, talking to the therapist. Pissed me off, actually. Telling her, telling him about the baby talking and then they want a baby. And then she's like, she has, she's been working and taking on projects. And then, you know, they mentioned about the mammogram she had with the lumps and all that stuff and things that she was worried about. And so basically. She's saying she's feeling like, well, maybe I waited too long. Maybe it's going to be too difficult. Maybe I waited. Or maybe I took on too many other things. And, you know, basically she's thinking her clock ticket. And so she claimed that's what's scaring her. And she crying because she want a baby. Now, let's can we can we be for real about this? Do y'all mind? Because y'all know I done already talked about the fact that the man that you talking about having a baby for is not an adequate candidate for baptism. He ain't. He up here broke his job's turkey and you want to give birth to a baby so that child can inherit his curse of poverty. Mm -mm -mm. That's number one. But number two, Candace, you been real unkind to people who was trying to get children. I'm just saying like, I like look Candace now a little bit. You know, sometimes she still piss me off. A lot of times, actually. But I like her a little bit now, really. But Candace, you got to remember your actions, honey. You haven't always been very kind to people who were trying to get pregnant. You were not always very kind to women who were pregnant. You were not always very kind to people who had just given birth. And now here you are seeking for a child. I'm not saying that that means she shouldn't be able to have a baby. I think any woman who want a baby should be able to have one unless you're a dangerous person. However, we got to be honest about what you put out in this world and how it come back to you. Okay. Now there's an old gospel song that say roll back the curtains of memory now and then. Okay. You got to remember the things that you've done that put out some bad energy that you might just be getting back. Girl, you don't remember telling that girl you ain't trying to get pregnant because you're drinking a beer. You don't remember that? You don't remember them little rude comments about, you know, people losing their turn and getting pregnant directly after that during the whole rainbow baby situation? Hey, Quiet Storm 87, speaking of new babies, this is our new sweetheart who is carrying a baby. Hey, Royal Mamas, thank you for being like number 118. Okay. And so all of those things, in my opinion, you have to take into account. You can't just do all sorts of things and think that you're not going to see it again. Like, like I said, I'm not wishing nothing bad on her, 
I'm simply saying, like, Candace, you know you haven't always been the most decent. When it comes to women and their children and they, they they fertility issues and all that. Anna say Ashley did take her wide body down to Williamsburg to be messy. Yes, she did. I'm not saying she didn't. I'm just pointing it out. I'm just pointing it out. Because, see, at the end of the day, everything we say, even if you feel justified, you got to be prepared when the words come back because they do. God's anointed daughter, thank you for being number 120. And while I can sympathize, she was, she's going to have to understand that the world is round. She's just going to have to understand the world is round. What you put out, you see back. Unfortunately, I hope it works out for her. But I hope that this is a moment that she takes to reflect on some of the things that come out of her mouth. Candace, darling, I'm just saying. So that happened. Then we get to this meetup with the ladies. So I want to say this about this scene. When all of the ladies were in this scene, everybody except for the necromancer, I feel like they didn't really set the scene up very well to let us know what was happening. We just saw people showing up. We just saw people showing up. So Mia was there. Then Wendy shows up. They greet. Candace shows up. Then Ashley shows up. Then we get Karen, Robert, and Nick, Giselle. Hey, be nice. Thank you for being 111. Happy Sunday. So they all show up. I was confused at first. I'm like, so whose situation is this? Mia showed up first. So maybe this is about her. Like they didn't really give us a lot to go on here. There was no prep for this scene. So I'm, I, I don't know. And I'm not complaining. I'm simply saying there was no setup. So was this a last minute thing that y'all just threw in? I don't get it. But anyway, so apparently Mia brought them there to let them know or to um, link them up with some guy who runs something called Monarch, which is a local publication in that area. And so he wanted to do a photo shoot with these ladies, this um, a spread, as it were, like a theme type thing where they were going to portray different um, black ladies, iconic black ladies. Um and it was interesting to see him saying he wanted to work with dynamic African-American women. And I'm sitting there like, well, where, 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 where are they? But OK, got it. Got it. Um, I said, well, all right, if you say so. If you say so. Um, interesting. And so we find out around that time after, you know, we find out from Mia what this is all about. We find out also from Mia that ne the necromancer is not invited. Hey, Lady Blue 57, thank you for being like number 119. Is this your first time live with us? If it is, please let us know so we can welcome you. Let me say welcome now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. So they were like, what's going on? You know, Team, team Yellow and crew were like, why, 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 why? And so basically... They were saying like, you know, Mia was like, the people really don't know her. They they wanted the ladies from RHOP. Um, apparently, this was something in the works before she got there or the people only requested the ladies they knew. They don't know you. And so um, Mia was kind of shady, in my opinion, because we see we saw footage of her talking to Necrosis about it. And when she was talking to the necromancer, she told Necktie, um... Hey, Nantucket, girl, I talked to him like she's great, but they were just like, they just really didn't know you. And at the same time, then when she gets in a confessional, she didn't have that same energy. It was a whole different energy. She shaded the dog pissed out of, out of, you know, out of, out of Narcavan. So I don't understand why on earth, you know, like why play in the girl face if you just going to shade her in the confessional, she going to see it later. I mean, we know she kind of dumb, but I'm sure she'll catch on. It's not your first time. Okay. All right. Thank you, pretty lady. I appreciate it. Welcome back then. So the dude shows up. He starts the, the talking about the fittings and who he's going to take first and who's going to be portraying who. So we find out that Candace is going to be portraying Diana Ross. And I said, okay, I can see that. She's tiny. Her eyes ain't as big as Diana, but you know, she's the songbird, so I could get it. Um... They got Giselle playing Beyonce, and he talking about there's a, um, a resemblance. And I said, sir, just quit lying. 
Don't give her no hope like that. Um, of course, she was happy with that. Karen got to be Lena Horn, which I thought that was so cool and um, a good fit. I think it was a, a good fit. Um, Karen was really pleased with that. All of the, all of the ladies seemed like they were really happy with who they got assigned. Miss Weedy Pooh, thank you for being 123. Um, then um, we had Ashley is Dorothy, Dorothy Dandridge. Um, um, Mia is Pam Grill was a real stretch. I mean, a real stretch. Pam Grill was a stone cold fox. And Mia is a large Hispanic gentleman. So that was a stretch. Wendy was Shirley Ralph. I thought that was very good. That, that wasn't a real stretch. And then Robert is Mariah Carey. I mean, <laughs> that worked for me for some reason. For some reason, that worked for me. And I can't tell you why, but it just worked. It was sad, though. It was, ooh, it was sad. But it kind of worked for me. I felt like they could have had Robert be Taylor Swift. I think that it, I think none of us would have complained. Robert could have been Taylor Swift. Um, Yeah. So then after that whole thing, we get Robert and Juan looking at a space for this um, Glow 30 um facial studio membership facial studio remember she was talking about she wanted to open a franchise because she wants stability and stuff and so she went looking at this office space that they said is 1600 square feet and um she looked like she was real hard at the price tag of sixty eight thousand five hundred sixty three dollars in monthly not monthly in yearly rent and um that's really not a lot of rent for a commercial space, but she looked really nervous at that. She swallowed hard at that price. Um, and basically saying that Juan getting fired was um, was what it took, you know, for her to want to have some stability. When I'm thinking, wasn't y'all trying to lie and tell us she was doing so great selling them gas station, them gas station hats? What, ain't that what y'all told us? Quiet Storm 87 say Robert should have been Smokey Robinson. I'm done. Y'all see Uncle Smokey grinding his hips and stuff? Yes. Yes, honey. Large Hispanic gentleman. Y'all make sure y'all hit that button. Hit that button. Belize and JB is in the house. Thank you for being 130. Right. That's what I'm saying. What happened to your successful hat business? Because it wasn't. Because it wasn't. Hey, leave Mariah alone. I ain't no Mariah fan like that, but what Mariah did to y'all? Leave that poor lady alone. All she do is sing Christmas songs. So anyway, um, she said she, you know, that made her feel like she did not want to be dependent on an employer for her living and she wanted stability. And I said, okay, good girl. That's a very good way to think because you got to pay that mortgage. You got to pay that mortgage. And there's no way around that. Them children cannot be outside on the curb like Ashley was. And then they're going to be traumatized like Ashley was and they'll end up with somebody really gross just to be stable. So, no. Hey, Michael Morris. Good to have you. Good to have you. Then Juan talking about, oh, yeah, I'm good at this. I, I could run this space for you. So, it's giving Juan trying to work for Robert instead of getting a job. So, you can keep talking to that girl crazy like that. Juan, I don't like you. Like, I never had no bad feelings about Juan. I, I'll crack a joke about anybody. Nobody's safe with me. Anybody can get joked on. But the whole idea that he's like, oh, I could, I could, I could run this office for you. What do you mean, sir? You need to be applying for a job. You don't need to be available to run no office for her. Go get a job, Juan. You sat up here on national television and told that girl she made your skin crawl. And it was so bad that she was scared to even call you from the last trip. Now you want to work for her in her office. Listen here, look, um, old lady, old, old man, whatever the hell you are. You using your coins from Bravo to open this franchise. You know you don't get that much. You got one shot at this. Don't you let him run your business. Because, see, I feel like wanna be done pulled the fast one. And took that girl money and ran off and be like, this payback for you messing up, man. And your girl said Juan was being nice because he don't have no money. He actually smiled this episode. Yeah, he do be smiling sometimes, but he never smiled at her. Anytime they talking, if he smile, he look off his face or he look at the flow. I have not forgiven him for telling that girl that she make his skin crawl. I have not. 
Hey, Leah, thank you for being 131, sis. Delightful. You caught that? Talking about um, he used he used his he's his space to pick up women you know what he would use that space to pick up women them women will be coming in there for facials all right i don't like it i don't like it it made me very uncomfortable him talking about he can run that place for her so then she um talking about she got to check on giselle or whatever like that and soon as she said she was gonna talk to giselle like he pretended like oh is everything okay and so she telling him, trying to tell him what's going on. He got up and went to the bathroom. So he don't even want to be next to you when you call Giselle. So he really ain't digging her. And that's when we find out um, about the daddy in the hospital with the brain cancer. Okay. So that's how that went. Um, again, a lot of this stuff was filler, but it was little stuff like him talking about running that office for her that set off warning bells in my head. I had warning bells in my head when he said that. Just like I had warning bells in my head when Dr. Mohawk told Necrosis that the ball is in your coat. They better watch these men. They better watch them because they're not trustworthy, okay? He going to run with them with his other woman. Yeah, but I, it, it, even if he run off with another woman, he don't need to run with that girl money. She got children to raise, okay? Anissa Michelle Williams say one is under... A lawsuit that if successful, he would be handed a literal black ball from college basketball. He's not under no lawsuit no more. That lawsuit is finished. That's over. Michael said, I'm still wondering what Juan says when he drunk. Karen said at first, it definitely ain't nothing good. Can um Karen already aired it out that he had said he wanted to do a threesome and he wanted Karen to be in the threesome and that he hugged her until her boobs almost exploded. Angie girl say. You right, says Juan going to get back to Robin. That's what I'm saying. I feel like she giving him too much room to get some get back for messing up his millions. Okay? You can't mess up millions of dollars for, for, for anybody and think you can still trust that person. You cannot. First chance he get, he going to get you back. Kelly Harper said Giselle didn't even share anything about her father in the confessional. Right. Rob had to tell everybody about Giselle's daddy. Yeah, she wasn't going to talk about it. She told Karen, but she wasn't going to really talk about it. And when the lady, and when she was in her confessional, the production asked about it. She said, we'll talk about it later. So you know how she does. Trina Taylor said, there's no way I can ever be with a man that says I made his skin crawl. And Juan was going to give, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. let me get that off my screen. Jesus. Okay. Kelly Harper said, that's probably why Giselle had second chair at the reunion. Giselle is not sharing anything this season. She never does. No, it's not. That case was settled. What do you mean? Um, Yolanda Franklin said, necrophilia better take notes because she's being used as a pawn to attack Wendy. I mean, I feel like this. If anything, what she better do is keep her eye on that man. Because them women, that's not the end, that's not the be all the end all. If she end up not on this show this year, next year, the third year, she still got her life. When it comes down to it, when it comes to Dr. Mohawk. She better watch herself because I feel like that man is not her friend. Now, that's just how I feel. Okay, Leah. Thank you, sis. Leah sent me a cash app. I didn't even know. Y'all, I switch phones and I don't get notifications, so I do apologize. I truly do. I'm trying to pull up the picture right now. Oh, thank you so much, Leah. She sent me the pictures with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. So in any event, that's what's going on with that. I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't know what they're going to do. Um, Yolanda said the necropolis is a, a, a plum fool. And she is. And she is. Michael Morris said, which man would you deal with on the franchise of the two, Michael Darby or Juan Dixon? Um, is rat poisoning not an option? Is it not? Kelly Harper said, Nick Bone doesn't care about being a pawn. She feels accepted by the cool girls. But are they cool? They th That has to be the lamest crew on television. She wants to be accepted by the yellow girls. She don't care that they're not cool. Because they've never been cool to anybody. Um... So anyway, 
So that happened or whatever. And um, then we get to Wendy and her show being over budget. So we see that um, Michael Morris says rat poisoning is an acceptable answer. Yeah, because that's what I, I'm going I'm to need a little rat poisoning. Just a smidge. Um, hey, Ty Jones, thank you for being 136. So she's over budget. She gave them people a $20,000 budget. We see that Eddie, happy Eddie, LLC, decided to give her $50,000 toward the project. She put herself on a $20,000 budget, which I think is smart, but she could not stick to it. So Miss Thing was over the budget, and that's what it is. So she said that her pilot, she wanted the theme of her pilot to be Black Girl Magic, and she stuck to it. She brought in the White House, the White House correspondent from the Grill. She brought in the owner of the Jasmine brand, the lady who got that gossip on on SWV and Escape coming back. That one. She brought her in. She brought in the CEO of Black Girls Vote. She brought in the host from the Daily Blast, and and, and they all set up. And it, it was literally a and a, a conversation with educated, well spoken, articulate, bright, beautiful black ladies. It looked really, really cool. Hey, Brown Style. It looked like a cool conversation. They had a lot of conversation about black issues, women issues from the clips that we heard. It was actually shocking. Not that they had the conversation, but it was shocking that Bravo allowed that much black intelligence on the screen at the same time. Because y'all know that ain't what they like. They like ignorance. They like bobbleheads. They like airheads. They like to present black women in a certain light. I feel like, I don't know. Y'all know I was not on Wendy's team when she first came on this show because she she really was off cold. But being honest, being honest, I think her being there has steered at least some attention away from the narrative of angry, aggressive, problematic, the, the mean black girl trope and literally putting the highlight on intelligence and success and accolades and education. Like it was really interesting. I, I enjoyed seeing that. I said, hmm, okay. It was just nice to see. It was so nice to see, to see all those beautiful black ladies in the same place at the same time accomplished educated, beautiful, powerful sisters. I'm, I was shocked. I'm going to be honest. I feel like Bravo is trying so hard to beat the racism, colorism, xenophobia rap that they're willing to allow in actual black excellence. I said, boy, all it took was you, the viewers, going to social media and giving them hell because y'all did that. Y'all gave them people so much hell. All of you, everybody under the sound of my voice, all of you have participated. I've, I've witnessed some of you. I recognize some of your avatars on Twitter. I recognize some of your avatars on Instagram, on various sites, under various posts. And you all participated and giving those people pure hell. Yes. And the Essence article. So the viewers have put Bravo's feet to the fire to such a degree that they felt compelled to allow intelligent, intelligent, well-spoken, successful, accomplished, powerful black women on our screens, even if it was just for a few minutes. So kudos to them for that. It was just so nice to see. And I want to say this before I switch um, to the next scene. Uh, quite frankly, I think we get to we got to see more of Wendy's actual personality during that scene, not what's forced. Not not her having to constantly defend herself, not her constantly have to having to play the game, not having to see her constantly guarding her words because people want to use them to make her seem a certain way. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was a breath of fresh air. I caught myself smiling involuntarily during that scene. I caught myself smiling involuntarily. And I absolutely agree, Angie girl, only Dr. Wendy could pull off that conversation um, intelligently like she did, only only her. So kudos to her. Michael says, we got to give Wendy credit for earning a successful education. She was a bit much for me at the time, but I grew on her or she grew on you. Though I hated the education excellence, 
was the result of pressure from her mom. Why do you hate that? That's what mothers are supposed to do. Mothers were created to apply positive pressure to your life. Your mother is not supposed to sit down and pat you with cotton balls and say, whatever you want to do is great. No, mothers are supposed to apply pressure, positive pressure to get you from point A to point B so that you do not rest on your laurels and come up mediocre. That is the job of a mother. If you are a mother and you're not applying pressure, you're not doing your job. So shout out to Mama Susan too, because she did a hell of a job with all hers look like. Angie Girl says, you see Wendy's back on Watch What Happens Live. They feeling the heat is killing Andy, but he got to do it. Yeah, he ain't got no choice at this point because you, the viewers, okay? Y'all have given these people pure D hell. Y'all passed Wendy the ball and she made the layup. So shout out to her. Shout out to y'all. So the next scene was Ashley and Gizmo, Giselle, getting ready for this fashion show. I got one question before we get too heavy into it. Why is Ashley's hairline halfway her scalp? I'm asking. I got $10 right now for anybody who can give me a good answer as to why the hell that girl's hairline does not stop at the top of her face. It literally begins right in front of her ear. Now, I ain't never like Ashley, not from day one, because she's just not my she's not my type of girl. I wouldn't go anywhere near her for fear of being bitten by whatever um, bugs might be jumping off of her. But I remember clearly before this season, I remember way back when she first came on the show, she was not wearing wigs and her hair was not all the way back here. So I need to understand why her hair is beginning all the way back here. What is going on? Am I the only person who noticed what's happening? What's going on with Ashley's hair? What is the deal? And I'm not somebody that makes a big deal about your actual hair because you know we're women. We got hormonal stuff to go on. It can thin, it can break off, whatever. I, Her hairline is like her forehead has always been big. So I'm not talking about her forehead. That hairline is noticeably further back. You, I was I was like, Ashley's, Ashley's forehead wasn't like that before. I mean the forehead, yeah, but her hairline was not like that before. It was not. All right, Christian Key in the house. She says she like number 40. Okay. I'm just I'm just trying to understand because do y'all recall? Am I tripping? You say it's the her bad nerves. Michael's wait, you say Michael's worms ate her hairline. Quiet song say Mr. Burns stressing her out and causing early hair loss. He ain't stressing her out. He finally bought her house. Tutu say my guest stressed from Michael a postpartum stuff. Yeah, something going on because I'm like that girl's hairline was not back that far. And it was noticeable. Like it was really like we joke about the forehead, but this was not a forehead issue. Yolanda say the hypocrisy of it is that Giselle expects everyone to be honest and transparent. That's true. Say so it comes from wearing cheap, heavy wigs, pulling her scalp back. Oh, okay. That would explain a lot because, you know, when she first came on the show, Ashley was not wearing wigs. Y'all remember that, right? She was not wearing wigs at all. And then she started wearing wigs. They were really bad. Like some of them looked like she got them from Sheila. I don't know. And now she got her hair back out and it looks crazy. You think it's from dyeing her edges. Oh, you know what? Chemical processes can damage hair. Chemical processes can damage hair. Because I was like, what is going on? He, he, L, E, L, say, Ashley about to be on here looking like Benjamin Franklin. She better leave them braids alone. Yeah, don't, she don't need to braid it. She don't need to put no stress on her hairline. Leave them wigs alone. Maybe she need to go holler at um, Judy, you know, BB, Big Booty Judy, BB Judy, with Kaleidoscope, because I heard them Kaleidoscope drops be working for the girls who got, like, stress alopecia and stuff, you know, from pulling and whatever. The traction alopecia, she need to try to do something because I was like whoa it, it really caught my attention DB said auntie I just got here I didn't think Wendy needed to say that when they mentioned Giselle's daddy 
Well, I didn't have a problem with it. I'm going to tell you that. Hey, Tracy Q. Say, so how are you just noticing that her hairline has always been tragic, lopsided? Yeah, but it wasn't that bad, Tracy Q. I don't believe, I don't remember it being that bad. I'm, I, I'm being honest. I don't, maybe it was, but I don't remember her hairline being back that far. Brown Styles says, since Ashley hairline been running back for a while. In season five, when Michael tore up production room at Big Rob's engagement party, her edges were noticeably running back in the ponytail. I remember her edges being weak, and I remember her forehead being, you know, expanded. But I don't remember it being this bad. Oh, not the messy, toxic, insecure, habitual liar crew. This was before she got pregnant. Okay, so maybe the baby, because, you know, babies will make you lose your teeth. They can make your hair. Okay, I'm just saying, like, I ain't being funny, but actually, mama dress came from Marshall's. Hey, not too much on Sister Underbridge. I like Sheila. So I'm watching the show now, and she really don't have hair, have a hairline at all. At all. Like, as much as I do not like um, Ashley, I felt for her in that moment. I did. I don't care if y'all pick at me. I felt for Ashley in that moment. I did. Because, you know, we're women. Like, you need your hair. And it's like... I know it's, and even the ladies who end up just shaving it all off or whatever, that's such a strong thing to do. And for ladies who don't want to shave their hair off or whatever, I felt like, you know, I feel like that's always such a tough spot for a lady to be in. So I really, y'all, I don't care if y'all pick at me. I felt bad for Ashley in that moment. I did. I was like, wow. And maybe she's not wearing the wigs now so she can like allow her hair to recover or whatever from it. But I was like, whoa, that was a lot. Jay Darkness said, y'all remember what happened when oh, Karen was grieving. We got to stay mindful. Our time will come. Yes. And her daddy wasn't even dead yet. So Tracy Q said her ends are trapped. Yeah, them, the, those ends needed to be um, trimmed. The hair looked extremely dry. Like she needed some, you know, deep conditioning, deep moisturizing and stuff. But I really did. I felt bad for her at that moment. It was like, oh no. Like Y'all know how, put okay, if I'm tripping, let me know. But ladies, put a one in the chat if y'all agree that our hair, and I'm saying our because me too, and I'm somebody don't even like to comb my hair. But y'all put a one in the chat if I'm right that our hair is important to how we view ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. Like it's a, it's a direct connection sometimes to even how we express our femininity. So put a one in the chat if y'all agree with me. Put a two if Nitra, you tripping. But to me, it is. And I really felt bad. I really felt bad. He, he, L, -E -L said, go to Turkey, get the hair transplant. Um, DB says, people will understand when they have to endure it. And the moment came for her. Don't rejoice in it. I don't think Wendy was rejoicing in it. And I think Wendy was making it clear that she ain't got no words of encouragement and nothing else. Because I don't blame her. There's no point in being fake. She didn't say, ha ha, that's what you get. Wendy simply said, I ain't got nothing for her. Because when I was going through it, y'all was dragging me and talking crap about my mama. And Giselle was right along with y'all. And I just don't feel like she wrong. So, okay. So, I got some ones. My ladies can feel me on this one. I was like, yeah, in that moment, my heart went out to Ashley. It did. I had a, a small soft spot for her. I'm like, wow. I'm so sorry. And I mean that because that that was like, that was sobering to see how bad it was. It was really, really sobering to see how bad that was. So that happened. Anyway, Giselle talks about, you know, the thing with her daddy and, and basically thinking that, um, thanking Ashley and the team for stepping up because she said she dropped all the balls um, while she going through that with her daddy. And, um, and said that she learned from her father that business is business. So she's still there to do what she needed to do. And shout out to you. Because that's what you got to do. You got to keep it pushing. The world don't stop because you hurt. You still got to deal with your hurt. And you still got to move on because the beat goes on. The world don't stop for one person. Unfortunately, we wish it could sometime, but it just don't. So I get it. Kelly Harper say hair loss is devastating. It is. It really is. Jay Darton says she's 35. She need to find a good stylist for, for us. 
Her hair loss has never, her hair has never been moisturized properly. She got to learn about her hair. Yep. A lot of ladies do. It's really tough. And like I said, that softened my heart toward her just a little because I, I really felt that. Angie girl said if Wendy would have said something, they would have said Wendy was said something wrong. Sure would have. Sure would have. Hey, Kai, make sure you hit the like button. Brian Patterson, thank you for being 145. So look, so they went on from there. Karen was in the confessional before she talked to Giselle. And she said that Giselle's um, dressing has improved. And it has. I have said that myself. Giselle this season has done a whole lot better than she had. I think Giselle made an effort this season to do better with how she dressed because she saw, again, y'all on social media, uh, you know, Karen clowning her, she could take. But I think she saw y'all as much as she pretends she don't look on social media. She do. She do. That's why she was mad about the colorism stuff. And I think that she saw how bad y'all was clowning her about her clothes and Giselle stepped up to the to the plate with the fashion this 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 season she was she was definitely not thank you for being 147 kai she absolutely was not a fashion bug but she stopped a lot of the shenanigans a lot of the fashion shenanigans that she had been committing okay <coughs> excuse me i had to sneeze y'all but anyway it was a lot it was it was a lot um, to say that she has she's improved a whole lot. I mean a whole lot. Um, but she says she's you know she hoped that that rubs off on this this fashion line. We saw that it did not. It did not. Um, but then she talks with um, her and you know she basically said that she could see that Giselle had been crying. Thank you for the bless yous in the chat from Queen and from Quiet Storm. I appreciate you. So in any event, um, she said she could tell the girl had been crying. She could tell she had been through it. Thank you, Krista Jones. I appreciate that. And I think we could all tell Giselle had been had indeed been crying and she had been through it, worrying over her daddy. It makes sense. Any of us would have. Michael Morris says, I wonder if Giselle ever read any comments online about her fashion. I believe she has. That's what I that's what I just said. I believe she has. Because she tipped her hand this year when she talked about you know, the social media stuff and the colorism and blah, 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 blah. All before she pretended, oh, I don't care nothing about social media as if the people on social media is not the viewing audience that allows you to get your check, you know, out there to the she shed. But either way, so they talked about that and um, her and Karen was over there talking and whatever. And um, um, Karen told her like, you know, hey, I'm here for you. I'm praying for you and all that good stuff. And I thought that was really, really nice. Um, Wendy shows up, greets everybody. And when she first greeted, Giselle did not even greet her back. So I'm just like, okay, obviously Wendy's not like you. You went to her event and you didn't even feel the need to greet her. She came to your event and she absolutely greeted you. And you still did not return her greeting. And eventually when, when Wendy says, you know, directly to Giselle, congratulations, uh, Giselle eventually said, appreciate it. Like, girl, you want to be nasty so bad. That's why people don't have sympathy for you. BB, thank you for being 148. You never watched the show? Oh, wow. Cool gamer say he going to bed. All right now, say your prayers, child. Anissa said, I feel bad for Giselle. That's all I have to say. But to receive grace, you have to give it. And she hasn't. And there's receipts on it, too. Yes, it is. Hey, Cheryl Thomas Hughes, Miss Dade County in the house. So that happened. Um, Robert shows up in another blazer, y'all. At this point, I feel like Robert just has a closet full of blazers. Blazers and jersey knit, sp jersey knit spandex blend maxi dresses with ruching. Like that's all that's in her closet at this point. So she shows up in another blazer this time with a bralette. I'm not sure why we needed to see that, but that is what she showed us. Happy to be happy. Thank you for being number 151. I appreciate it. Um, so that's what she showed up in. Um, Sheila came with her arm cutouts. I say, all right, Sheila. Sheila had a little sparkle on her arms, child. Yes. Yes, she did. She had the cutouts all the way down the long sleeve and had her some, uh, some plastic rhinestones across them. 
And I say, Sheila, you look good, girl. Yes, she do. Yes, she do. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, if y'all say something about Sheila's wig, I'll allow it. But don't y'all say nothing bad about Sheila. Sheila came in with her best and Ashley was acting like she was shocked to see her mama. And she said, I wasn't going to let you do this without your mama being present. I say, that's right, Sheila. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because you're going to help us spend the money as you should. <laughs> but she's there to support her baby. And she, she came with them arm cutouts. I say, all right, Sheila. Sheila, Sheila came in there, gussied up. And I was so tickled, it made me happy. It did. I was so I was so happy to see Sheila with her arm cutouts. Um, who else? Um, necrosis showed up and something with some spandex and a cutout and some sparkles around the cutout. I don't know what that was. Candace showed up in, in a blue lace mini dress, understated but cute. Deborah showed up hugging on everybody. I say, oh Lord, here go the mess. And then I had to remember. This is when the fight happened. Eh! So she ran around hugging everybody, grinning in everybody's face, looking like she looking. Um, Wendy, Wendy looked up and saw Deborah and said, well, she wasn't surprised that Ashley would bring that girl. She said, because Ashley is messy. I think Wendy finally figured it out. Ashley, Ashley's just messy. She's not your friend, baby. She's just messy. Okay. Um, so, um, meanwhile, Wendy's up there talking to Ashley, other friend, Britt, okay, the little black girl. And so, Deborah come barging in on the conversation. Wendy ain't want to be bothered with her, but you know, Wendy going to try to be classy and try to be a lady. And she, you know, spoke back and gave her a little half, you know, hug or whatever, because she reached to hug her because she running around hugging everybody. She want to be on that screen so bad. Like, girl, we don't want to look at you. Your face is enough to get the show canceled. We don't want to look at you, Mulan. What's the name of that dragon from Mulan? What y'all call that thing? Shushu? Something. Whatever that is. We don't want to see that. It's horrible. So she barging in, hugging on everybody. Wendy was like, child, mm -mm, she's so fake. I can't take it. I cannot take it. Um. And, and so that happened. And I said, okay, this is going to be a mess. Um. Sharice had on this, this, it looked like she got this from Lane Bryant's back in the day, this red, god awful print, this blousy dress. I was like, Sharice, why do you wear stuff like this? But she did, Jacqueline there and something that she done got from somewhere, some two pieces, giving fashion over with the gut out. I said, okay, fine. Um, I guess this is what we're doing. Mia shows up in this yellow zip up shirt dress, mini shirt dress. I mean, it was what it was. And they telling her she getting thick. I think Sharice told her she was getting thick. Hey, Vita from Denver. Hey, Tony Booth. So Kiara shows up in this stunning sky blue silk number with embellishments all over it. It was so adorable. I said, look at her. She's just so cute. Um, Mia said they're going to have a release party to show the pictures from the photo shoot they did. And, tell, and Wendy was like, oh, how did I do or whatever? And she told, um, she told Wendy, girl, you slayed. And Wendy was like, oh, what else is new? I said, that's so cute for them. I like that they were having that really cute conversation. I thought it was adorable. Um, that was nice. That was nice. Um, the show starts. Ashley's already complaining about lighting problems, y'all. Ashley said, why they don't have a spotlight on the girl? Why is the spotlight not on her? I said, oh, no, 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 no. So they're talking about lighting problems. And um, Karen said, this is not no athletic line. She says, this is the booty club night, booty call nightclub wear. Um, Uh Candace Crazy Tail said, Did Giselle design most of these clothes? I want to say Wendy said, obviously. Um, then they they actually had a piece in there that was all that was like a dupe, a whole dupe of the outfit that Wendy had on the next season when they went saying she didn't have no substance because she looked good. The minute Wendy looked good, they claimed she didn't have no substance. Y'all remember the outfit she had on from Zara? Because that was that outfit was from Zara. Absolutely. 
And the outfit that she had on from Zara was like this leotard. It was really high up on almost, it was like high cut almost up to the waist. And then she had the low rise pants with it. They literally duped the entire outfit, everything except the cutout at the chest area. And so Wendy clocked it. Wendy clocked it. Like, oh, is this the same outfit that you claim I didn't have no substance because I had it on? Child, she clocked it. They say imitation is the best form of flattery, you know, for the mediocre. I don't know why people leave the for the, medi for the mediocre off the end because that's who that's for, for the mediocre, okay? Yes, there was nothing. Yeah, there was definitely nothing to spotlight. Yep, and they did mark that outfit to a T, to a T. Mm-hmm. And so that happened. And I was just like, at that point, my eyes were open because I said, okay, now we're going to get the mess. Okay. Candace referred to their clothing as elevated Alibaba. I tend to agree. Um, Kiana was like, well, I could see what she said, Alexander Wang. And so Candace says, Alexander Wang does not give you yeast infections. I said, boy, leave it to Candace Dillard, honey. Then Robert was like, well, this is more leisure than workout, but I'm proud of them. And I said, OK, you got to support your girl. Um, Mia was like, I don't know if I would wear these to work out in, but, you know, everything's nice. Um, necrosis just kiss, kissing up hard. Necrophilia talking about, oh, it's a real fashion, real fashions. And like, girl, 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 stop. She just that she has nothing to offer. I'm not sure why she's here. So after they do their final walk, they come walking out. Giselle is, str is struggling in them heels as per normal. She does a little talking after their final walk and, you know, telling the crowd that she's so appreciative of Ashley for, you know, stepping up because she's been dropping the ball. Like it, it, to me, it was giving sympathy play more for the camera than the crowd, because I'm sure the crowd didn't know what was going on. Um, I wasn't really digging it, but it was the whole teary-eyed sympathy play. I wasn't feeling it at all. Um, Mia then tells Team A about the surgery for Giselle's daddy, and she going through a lot, blah, blah, blah. Candace was like, look, I can wish her well from a distance. And I want to think I heard Mia say, why? What do you mean, why? This girl done lied on her man, done lied on her. Like she's she's really gross. They are not friends. I understand wishing you well from a distance. Like I wish good for you, but don't nobody want to come interact with you. It's almost like Mia thought they were gonna run up to embrace her. Like nobody's running to embrace you, baby. Uh-uh. Because you haven't cultivated that sort of friendship or even you know interaction with them. So you can't expect that. Wishing well from a distance is the best they can do. I'm that girl. So every time I look at Mia, she reminds me of Madam the Puppet. And you're not wrong. All she needs is that turban, girl. Yolanda says, sad to hear about Giselle's father. Yeah, you know. Sorry. I mean that. Sorry. You know. I'm sorry. Because that's not pleasant to go through for anybody. But you cannot expect an outpouring of support and love and people to be, you know, cloistering around you, gathering around you when you have not cultivated that you have cultivated and created an environment of distinction and um bitterness and anger and adversarial relationships all across this friend group if you can even call it that so that's just kind of what you get in my opinion wendy said like basically she ain't got nothing for it she don't have nothing to say about it she said my mama was going through what she was going through and y'all dragged me and my mama and Giselle was right there with y'all when you, and, and going along doing all that stuff with y'all. So whatever. And so Mia was like, but we have to know about what's going. And I'm with Wendy. It don't matter if you knew or not. I have nothing to say about this. She was right for it, in my opinion, because I wouldn't have had nothing to say about it either. And I'm glad and I'm actually glad she explained herself. Because if she had just stood there and said nothing, everybody would have analyzed all of her facial expressions. They would have analyzed whether she blinked twice or three times. They would have analyzed whether she smiled or didn't smile. They would have analyzed everything about that woman's face. So I'm glad that she was clear and concise and explained herself as to why she has no commentary for that whatsoever. Okay? 
Brian Patterson said, you cannot expect an outpouring when we know what he has called black women right. Daddy Graves is a known and celebrated colorist who had no problem referring to an educated black woman as Aunt Jemima. That will go down in history. Talvia, how beautiful. Thank you. You are so lovely. Please, please come back again. Thank you so much. Can I say Mia did ask, why is that? I thought that was Mia who asked Candace, why is that? Why would she not wish her well from afar? First of all, let's be honest. Nobody is going to do anything except wish you well. Nobody wants to hear about somebody's parents sick. Most people respect age. We respect wisdom. We respect the fact that those are your parents. It's certain stuff we're not going to do when it comes to your parents or whatever. So, of course, we're going to wish you well. But if we're talking about an, a, a terribly bad person, we're not running to hug you. I don't care what you're going through. I'm going to stay away from you. And I might even utter a prayer for you, but I'm not coming anywhere near you. I understood exactly where Candace was coming from. And I, under, I understood where Wendy was coming from. What I will say is that I feel bad that she felt like she had to explain it. But I think that if we're being honest, she did have to explain it. Because we see how the her as a black woman on this on this platform is being treated. She can't even look at a person's child. If she looks at them, they're going to say, you rolled your eyes. You did this. You did that. So I understand her feeling like feeling the need to explain why she has no commentary for that. Why there's not going to be any rallying. Why I'm not running up to embrace her. I'm not doing any of those things. And I understood it. It's sad that it was necessary, but I completely understand if we're being honest. Now, so we got through that. Um, Everybody starts drinking, partying, having a good time. So let me put the stream yard because I want to hear what y'all got to say because, baby, this is where the fight happened. And y'all know we did watch the fight video over here. Okay, I didn't even get no monetization on that video because I was serious about we was going to watch that fight. I was serious about we was going to watch that fight. We might come back and review the fight again. You know, now that this thing hit the screen and everything. Okay. Oh, hold on. There we go. So this is where the fight takes place. So before the camera shuts off, everybody's drinking, partying, having a good time. And they, they pan over or like click over or switch the camera over. And we see D. Bora, the little dragon from Mulan, the, the Geico caveman, George Foreman, David Allen Greer, whatever you want to call that thing. We see her watching Candace making faces. And I'm like, is this when she decided she was going to bother Candace? Is this when it happens? Tony Booth said, when you tell someone to their face, you don't like them, so you don't care about them being attacked, you shouldn't expect anything. You better tell the truth. Talvia said, I'm sorry, Giselle can't expect people to show her grace when she's been so nasty to others. And you're right. And you're right. And so, hey there. Hey, y'all. Hey, boo, let me tell them this little bit and then I'm going to get what you got on this whole thing. Okay. So the camera shut off, but they said the mics were still attached. So what we heard was, what we heard was Deborah asking Candace if she can talk to her again. So it's like, you did this last season. Candace already told you no. She has no conversation for you. So we hear Deborah clearly asking Candace again, can I talk to you or whatever? Candace was like, no, get her away from me. Get the help away from me. I said, I know that's right, Candace. Get the help away from me. And then we hear her, you know, we hear Deborah losing it. Oh, you can talk and this and you, you've been saying this behind back. It's not a behind back. She's not your friend. She doesn't have to talk to you. And it's like, she desperately wanted that moment with Candace and it wasn't going to happen. And so that would lead into what we saw on that fight video with, with um, Candace having her back turned and she's dancing and having a good time over there with Wendy. And then we see Deborah, the caveman, try to run past Kiana or throw a, throw a drink past Kiana and Kiana stopped her from throwing it and they ended up tussling. That's what led into it, her trying her best to make Candace pay her some attention. Because Candace was paying her no attention. Now, what I will say, after her trying to attack a cast member and then getting into fisticuffs 
with another cast member creating an entire melee, um, I feel like at that point, she should never be allowed anywhere on that set ever again. She should go the way of Fat Tomb, Sheree's um, root working friend that stole Drusadora's purse and ran through the house. I think that's where she should end up. But let me start with Cate, and we're going to go to Kai. What y'all think about this episode? What y'all got on this? Um, With that fight, I think Ashley had that plan. Because uh, why was she asking, is the cameras down? But they forgot they still had, they were still mic'd up. Because, like I said, why you keep coming for me, girl? I ain't got no words for you. What you want? I call you Sesame Street. You said, but you said, I can't, you can't say anything to my face, but you said this, that my husband was trying to get with you behind my back. So why would I say something to your face? Yeah, how you much you want moment. me to say to you? Right. Yeah, I got nothing to say to you, girl. Leave me on hell alone. I'm still not saying nothing to you, and you still talking to me. What part don't you understand? I don't want to have nothing to do with you. You lie on my husband, and you keep coming around. And um, Ashley did that to get a moment out of Candace. Because why would you keep bringing this girl around and you knowing that Candace do not have no words for her, but you still allow your friend to go do this? She sought that mess up because why would she ask him, was the cameras down? What difference do it make if the camera was down or not? Because you sought that up so your little Sesame Street friend can come mess with Candace and have a fight. That's what she did it for. Yeah, you know, that makes sense because at that point, if there's no cameras, she could have ran to the blogs or said whatever she wanted to say and pretended like Candace was instigating a fight or Candace was the aggressor because we know Team Yellow don't mind lying. Now, y'all yeah, know see, Team Yellow no lying. Them, yeah, them cameras were still up. See, they can't lie now because, see, the cameras were still up. Plus, they, you know, they tried to lie and said Deborah, uh, that Candace came up to Deborah first. Remember before the fight even showed? And she was yeah, up there yeah. whooped Candace. Yeah, see, they lied before. I but they had no idea somebody had the footage. I heard something about them saying that Candace had grabbed a bottle to attack the girl. That was the story I heard. That's what I'm saying. They was trying to put Candace from having as Candace the aggressor. But see, they didn't realize that they were still mic'd up. And if somebody didn't have that uh, footage, everybody would have still been trying to blame Candace for something that she didn't even do. So Ashley is a total fail. She need to go away. But she with tried. That, with that somebody look like they slapped that wig on her head. Because the, 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 um, the hair, I know you feel sorry for her hair. I would feel sorry for her hair, too, if I look like that. But the thing of it is, if she had married the vampire from the underworld in the first place, if you married to this millionaire, child, you should have stayed your butt in the salon, getting your hair deep conditioned and all that. This man just got you, used you like a, a, a piece of rag, and threw you away. You still with him because you know you can't you got to depend on him because you thought that house, you thought that two, you thought you was going to get that two million dollars from Candace to pay for that house because he probably told you that what she probably told him to uh, sue for for that house and you didn't get that. Now you really mad. So now you're trying to have somebody fight Candace. Ain't nobody but you know, what, no, now you know Michael wasn't letting her spend money like, just like she wanted to. Now Tracy Q had a point. D. Bora did come dress to fight. I think so. Yeah, Ashley sought that mess up. I'm telling you, she sought it up. Because everybody was clowning her friend, calling her Sesame Street, calling her ugly. So everybody was clowning her friend. Wait, she sought that mess it? up with them clothes oh, that look like they uh, belong in the flash dance uh, wardrobe uh, show uh, showcase. That don't make listen. no sense. How anybody going to work out in that mess? Look at that. You'll be listen, a fool you wearing it. I got to ask you a question. Now you're going too fast. Okay, go ahead. So please. do you think that the girl really wanted to like hard down have a moment like an argument or a knockdown drag out with Candace because they was mad. She was mad because people took Sesame Street and ran with it and laughing at her. Yeah, Ooh. I guarantee you. Yes, she's mad about it. She's mad that because she thinks that she was pretty and that's what called my pretty friends whatsoever. She thought because she was light skinned with with uh with the good hair that she was beautiful. But everybody was dogging her out on the uh, internet, on the YouTube streets. And she, uh, Ashley just got her played. And she's looking a hot mess. So, yes, that's why she's coming for Candace. Because why else would you be coming for Candace? The girl says she don't want to talk to you. Why you keep coming around? You coming Kai, around for a moment. Think? Kai, what Hello. you think? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, baby. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm with, I, I believe there was a, a bit of set up 
going on here because it is weird that Alex is like oh cameras are down and it's immediately after the cameras are down a couple minutes later the board's approaching her and also remember the fight was leaked if you remember, like, TV deets on Twitter was going off about how Candace was going around bad-mouthing her and Deborah going back and forth, not talking to each other, but Candace was going around talking, talking, talking about her, um, and Candace threw something. That's what started it. Like, that was the first thing that came remember, out. I remember they lied. Before, we did, we remember, we talked time. about it. Yeah, you know, I showed that fight over here. Lost my monetization on that whole video. I did not care. We reviewed that whole fight start to finish, and we had to prove that Candace didn't throw nothing at her. Candace's back was turned. But you're right. They yeah, did yeah. Like. So mm -hmm. that to me, that's where I do feel like maybe, maybe Ashley didn't know that her friend was going to go fight, but maybe Deborah knew she was going to go fight. But I actually knew something was going to pop off. Because the thing about it is that TV D, that TV Deets thing came out immediately before the before the videos got leaked and all that kind of stuff. And that's a person who has a a, a podcast who's relatively popular. So I just find that so funny that he already had the story. And it was completely different than the camera footage from the phones that we got. So I, I do think that there was a miscommunication of how far Deborah was going to go when it came to Ashley. Oh, you know what? That would explain it. Because Ashley wanted her to go and like have a whole argument or I'm going to go confront you. She probably didn't know that... Um, Lord, they say Deborah's husband is milk and cookies. Oh, Y'all so wild. Yeah. Um, but... Cookie Monster, the, the 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 caveman, she came there with it in her mind that she was gonna try to fight Candace, or maybe she did come to argue, and once Candace brushed her off yet again, she just lost her cool because she's so desperate. Yeah, something about that just don't sit right. And oh, I was just thinking about something. What was it? What was it? What was it? Ashley, the fight. Also, because I, I think that it was planned for the fact that once that thing happened, remember how Ashley acted, regardless of what sides you were on, Ashley still was cool with the whole fighting thing when it came to Candace and Monique, right? Now, all of a sudden, Ashley is talking to Candace, and they had like a come to Jesus moment after Deborah did all of this, right? You and Deborah are not even cool if you were in Monique were. So I would have tossed, like, what? This, this would be your close friend, and you were trying to pressure Candace to talk to her last year. And why won't you talk to my friend, Candace? Now, all of a sudden, you can toss her to the wolves now that the video came out and everyone can see what went down. So, I truly feel like, yes, yeah, actually. And Ashley does this thing where she always makes whatever Candace say a big deal. So I bet you she was hoping Candace was going to say something that she thought she could run with and make it a big deal that Candace would dare say this to someone. But yeah, like with the situation with mm -hmm. um, Giselle and then was out there, on, you know, they went on vacation, and she and um, she said, "Oh, you laughed about that, but great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, trying to she get jumped, trying to get into something. Why did you laugh, babe? Like that thing from Mel, that damn, that done Stewie." She got a lot of she got a lot of most things. She got a lot of things up her arms, and it ain't I mean up her sleeve, and it ain't just her arm. She always pulling some some crap. That that stew is some else for now. That stew is sneaky. She did all that sneakiness, but you couldn't sneak and get that money from Michael. I mean, from the vampire from the underworld. Well, she's still on his payroll, so she ain't yeah. got to sneak and get it. She she ain't gonna sneak nothing. She has sneak sneak. Nothing. I just think because we all know how I feel about football head. I just think she just um. I think she talks out of both sides of her mouth when it comes to her and her husband and the money situation because she's also the same person who was in everybody's pockets, counting everybody's coins, telling how everybody should be living their lives and be with their husband, what's conducive, what's not conducive. This is your mama's table. This is your mama's house. So I, that's why I really don't see it for her because um, that really bothers me when it comes to the fact that you're a biracial heifer who grew up in the trailer park and you crawled up and you were working in this man's other restaurant you're the one who saw him on camera and set your eyes on him and then you come here with other black women who come from something and not to say that it's her fault but the fact that she will she will being his wife over people and now all of a sudden because you are stuck being in this cage that you built your for yourself you want people to feel bad for you i have no empathy no sympathy no nothing because you sat there and were pretty cool well my husband's a millionaire meanwhile he had you on a tight leash and you have never spent anywhere the amount of money he has but oh, you were no, going he, ahead. Girl, yeah, go ahead. He had her on such a tight leash. She couldn't be getting deep conditioning on her hair. That's why she, her hair is in that condition. Mm -hmm. Him having millions of dollars. Hey, one Moss B. Yes, huh? that's why she in the condition. Michael did not let her spend money. Michael wouldn't let her 
buy lavish clothing. Michael didn't let her get lavish spa treatments. Michael didn't let her do anything lavish. He had her living like she was lower middle class in that shoebox of a penthouse is what he did. Yeah, so it would be one thing if if she didn't act like she's the like she does that thing where she you know wants to pretend like she knows all the big words and all this kind of stuff and she's like she grew up like a Candace did, but then also now you want to come crying tears to me about how you know I just don't know what to do and I just never saw myself like being alone and da da da. I'm like you never saw yourself being alone with a man that you married that's already older than your father. <laughs> oh, you gonna be alone because he going to the upper room. And what's even funnier is the fact that she had to come clean like she needs stability because she was real poor coming up. And I think that that just speaks volumes to what her real issue is with Candace. Your real issue is that you envy that she comes from that background and you came from the curb with your things after your eviction. That's what she envies. He, he, L, E, L said, baby, the leash was tight and it must have attached to her hairline. Y'all don't okay. have no pity for this girl. <laughs> Lord, that's oh, what I want Megan, to. Megan Roger, hey boo, she says so. D Bor and Ashley no longer follow each other on Instagram. They probably had a falling out after the fight. Well, they hadn't fell out. Um, this fight happened like way last year or something. So when did they stop following each other? They might have fell out after Candy after Ashley was like, Well, I'm still finna try to be friends with Candace because I need to stay on this show. It wouldn't have been the fight that did it. Mm. But what you was gonna say, Kai? Uh oh, because I was trying to catch up on the episode because I had like I took a little nap and I slept a little too long. And then I walked in and y'all talking about hair losses and edges and corners. I said, What is going on up in here? Y'all were getting because down because I don't remember Ashley's hairline being in the middle of her head by her ear. I don't remember it being there. It was <laughs> it matter, as a matter of fact, I can swear to it. That girl's hairline was not back that far. And I, I I'm being honest, I felt bad like i really felt some type of way like whoa girl you doing bad for real where's your hair don't laugh don't okay put yourself in her shoes if uh -huh. your hairline had done that to you like you know that's gonna cause some type of psychological damage yeah, I'm like that's uh -huh. not child's play hair plugs Honestly, baby. go get treatment something yeah, I, but I'm just saying I felt for her. That's what you walked in on was that. But now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Juan telling Robert, oh, I mm -hmm. could run this office? Because I didn't like that. I'm just going to be honest. I feel like, look, I don't like Robert riding the walk and I can't stand her Ric Flair looking tail. But something about that man setting her up to fleece her makes me uncomfortable. This is the same man who told her that she make his skin crawl. That that was like a red flag for me. Like Robert, run, run, Robert, run, because this is about to go bad. It is just kind of wild watching. To me, it's like he don't want to do anything unless it truly feel, feeds his ego. Like he's not really up to like do something to support his family. It seems like it seems like if there's not a job that's going to feed his ego, he's not going to do it. And the fact it is is that we have been watching Robin try in and everything to make sure they're on top and now you're not this house so you have to stay on top like you cannot go through another foreclosure and you're behind the time I can run the spa star you can barely run your team let like your, your profession that you yeah, are trained for remember remember he had a win percentage of like 30 percent so he couldn't run that team yeah it is and she's just kind of like laughing about all kinds of stuff. I'm just like, Robin, can we shake you up, wake you up, baby girl? What is going on here for you to be sitting here? He, he, L, E, L, go to the corner. You um, see what um, That's what happened when you hunch old men, you start to look like them. They do suck your youth, so, hey. Hey. Say, Yolanda say, Juan need money to creep around. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Cause ladies get paid to play, and he gonna have he gonna have to have some money to pay. That bothered me. Okay, so now let me ask you this: Hey, prognosis. Um, did you catch that comment that Doctor Mohawk made to the necropolis? 
and told her now the ball is in your court. Did that? Oh, yeah. Am I am I hypersensitive or did that bug you too? Because that bugged me. <laughs> It seems like, because um, I have been going in and out of the season, because I think I'm on my last leg. But I did see the episode where they initially went to the doctors, and the doctor, the and I think he was Caribbean, and he did say yeah. something about his swimmers being slow, and they kind of just skated over that and went back to NECA. So to me, this is like a repeat offense of like, okay, well, now they took my sperm, so now it's up to you. I'm like, sir, the doctor already told us your sperm count was like a low and, and slow. Low and slow. But with that being said, he didn't even want to do the IUI. No. He wanted to keep playing around with nature when obviously the girl needs some help from somebody because your stuff is substandard. Okay? And I'm trying to say okay. this clean. And the fact that he finally agreed to it and then once they, you know, implanted it, you know, did the insemination or whatever. So that way we ain't got to hope that it gets in there. They put it in there. Okay? For him to say the ball is in your court, I was like, you didn't want to do this. So now that you've done this thing that you didn't want to do, if it doesn't work, you're going to blame this girl for your childlessness. Like we didn't hear them people say that your stuff is substandard. That's I feel like what putting her up to do is to blame her for their childlessness. Okay, let's be real. This whole relationship is a setup because I don't understand. You were on the East Coast. You were in LA. How did y'all meet? Because we still haven't heard that story. Y'all were barely, y'all didn't even, never lived together. Y'all only been married a year and something. You already on the show. So that means you're also, you were also um, interviewing to be on the show early on in your relationship. And now you already want a baby. This whole Don't relationship forget. seems like setup. Don't forget. She um, shot um, a sizzle reel or a pilot with Carlos King for another show. For VH1. In LA. About right, so it wasn't just that she took time to interview for this show, she took time to interview, get on that show, film for that show, that show not to work out for her to then reach out to his cousin Lebe to, to, to try to get uh, the hook up through Wendy. And when that didn't work, she tried to sell them, I'll bring dirt on Wendy. Yes, because I'm like, you know, popped up in Potomac again. I'm sorry, I will never get over you. Come up here. I'm a rich bee. My daddy a rich bee. He done taught me how to be a rich bee. And again, we still see no appliances in this turnkey house. I'm going to keep talking about the turnkey house. We haven't even seen the house that often because, you know, there's not enough personal story with her. So, like, at I this point, like she could sorry. have a whole freaking menagerie in that house. We would never know because we get no personal story from the necromancer. At all, Nantucky and that's why no, because you do worry about a shrine. But now that we are off of that, now we're on to Ike's little slow swimmers. Hey, Latasha, and that's my thing. I feel like we're rushing towards that. Like, to me, like, obviously, it doesn't happen yet. But my thing is, like, we, we saw all this happen with Sonia. Sonia popped up pregnant, now she's not even on Atlanta. My thing is, nigga, we haven't even gotten to know you. You have this fresh marriage. We don't really, like, we don't know nothing about you. And as you said, we done nothing. skipped over you coming on the show. Now we're on to the shrine. Still don't know nothing about you and your husband. Now all of a sudden, we're supposed to care about you being pregnant? Baby. Yeah, we no. don't know. We know nothing about you guys at all. And I hope she don't think that's going to keep her on the show, because I'm sorry, girl. It won't. It better not because I'm I'm bored. I'm tired and I don't like it. She hasn't she hasn't given me enough. I don't see her sense of humor. I don't know, you know. I, I just don't know anything about her. Yeah, we don't know you. It's just like the guy that wanted to do that photo shoot with those ladies, and um they didn't include her because they don't know you. Like you haven't I, made I say, any oh. anybody. No one knows. And that you. reminds me. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, thank you. Cause, Cause that reminds me. Because did I always say it was always weird to me how Nika kept going back and forth about Wendy knows me, I know Wendy, she knows me, da 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 da. And I've always said, I see, I follow Wendy on, on the Instagrams or the Twitters. Baby girl is always out and about doing her do. The fact that this is a local newspaper that did not that did not want you a part of it, but you're supposed to be this high and mighty rolling with the high ruler in Nigerian society, and they can be bothered with you still because no one knows you. Exactly. No one knows you. Hey, Wayne Jackson. No one knows her at all. And that was, um, while I don't like her, it made me uncomfortable. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I get secondhand embarrassment kind of easy with certain stuff. That was one of those things. 
watching that scene with Mia, with the large Hispanic gentleman playing in her face and then saying something with a whole different vibe in the confessional, it made me uncomfortable. It did. See, I'm that's sorry. why she should have came on there with a better perspective than what she did. And then it wasn't funny. I mean, it was funny, but it wasn't funny when um, Mia, Mia told her, um, nobody know what you do here. <laughs> Nobody know anything about you, and like he you just moved here. Show. And but yeah. it was the thing that when she talked to, when she was talking to the necromancer, she came from the standpoint like, "Girl, I advocated for you. I told him like, well, she's great, and you know, but they just don't know you yet, and you just moved here." But then when she got in the confessional, that was not the that was not the mood. Like, am I wrong? And like I said, oh, yeah, what are you here. talking about? You talking about Mia? Yeah, that always throw shade. It always lies. So there ain't nothing different. She probably didn't try to act. She probably didn't try to act. Uh, advocate for that girl. She probably just told her that. You know, Mia lies just like she breathes. So we can't believe nothing she say. And then you know, I don't know. Like I know she basically was lying. I'm not saying I think she actually advocated for her. I think the part that I'm not comfortable with is y'all literally using this girl and y'all see now that it's not working so it's like now you just she's rubbish. disposable yeah you just rubbish now we'll just throw you to the side and um we all knew that that's what time it was but it's it's just like real crazy to watch that play out it's real crazy to watch it play out it's real crazy to see mia being the one to do it to her i don't know it made me feel a way I didn't like the way it made me feel. And okay, then I took up, I understand. You understand? I understand. You yeah, know, I was like, hard. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it. Like, yeah, you brought it on yourself, but I didn't like it. Coming from Mia, of all people. Mia. Like, that was a lot for me. That was a lot. Like, girl, don't know if I didn't know you. Like, what was that for? Like, Mia, you ain't nobody. People just saw you on the show. Like, they just want, they wanted RHOP people. They wanted people that they know from the show. Like, don't nobody know. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a lot. That was cold. <laughs> it was nasty. Like, it was nasty. And what, yeah, what bothered it, it was a shame because everybody that's um on the show is in the calendar or whatever they whatever the thing he's doing, but you being left out, that's like a slap in my face. Girl, I don't even I like I guess that's Nekka. She just trying to fit in, but that'll be a slap in my face. Everybody's in there and I'm not even a friend of the show. I'm the main um my, one of the main characters and I can't even be in it. That was a slap in the face for real. Maybe that's it was, she won't be back next season. I hope so. It was that part. And I'm going to tell you the other thing that struck me. If either one of the black women on that show had done that, we'd have heard about it forever. We had people literally analyzing the facial muscles of Wendy and Candace because Giselle was talking and God forbid they not look up from their phones and give her their undivided attention because you know little miss dingy is talking little miss neck no little, little miss neck slashes is talking so all the world must stop and when it came down to it oh it, since you didn't we don't like it and there were literally people in social media because y'all know i had to post the, the scene because i'm like where were the eye rolls where where are these eye rolls of which you speak people analyzing the facial muscles of these black women but this heifer literally sat up here and, and it was just so, it, it was like, don't nobody know you. Like, you're nothing. You're nobody. If any, if either one of those black ladies, be it Karen, Candace, or Wendy, because if we being honest, those are the black ladies on the show, arguably Giselle. Not so much Giselle because she's the captain of Team Yellow. But if either of those black women had done that, it would have been World War Three, And y'all know it. Wayne say, "Woo child, yes, thank you, Wayne." Yeah, it that's been why I said, "Well, since um, 
since neck is not going to be in it, we're not going to be in it. But like you said, it was a light skinned person telling a dark skinned person that, that they're not going to be in it. But you're right. If it was Wendy telling uh, Robin that she can't be in it or Candace telling uh, like, girl, Karen what she you can't be in it, it would be a whole lot of things. Why are they not as colorism, high as colorism as Ken and them saying that they can't be in the Mecca? I don't think nobody should be in it. So, yeah, you're correct, Sinitra. You're totally correct. It bothered me so much. It was like nails down my spine. And I didn't like feeling that way because I don't want to. Good night, Queena. I don't want to feel no type of empathy toward, you know, neck necktie. I don't. Because I don't like you. I don't like nothing you stand for. But it was something about Mia doing that that just plucked at my last good nerve. I couldn't. I, I whew, It was a lot. So now let me ask y'all this. If you had to rate this episode 1 to 10, what you giving it? Kat, what you got? Um, I'll give it a 6 and a half, maybe a 7. Mm -hmm. Only because we got to laugh at that fashion show. That made the show, that fashion show, because them some <laughs> that's some fashion that'll boost them on you and sell like they car. So yeah, that 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 seven made that fashion show made it a seven. Cause the rest of it was boring. As I don't know what. Oh, at the mm -hmm. little end, at the little fight. We didn't see the fight, but you know what I'm saying. But yeah, at least we got the audio show. to hear what led up to it. Yeah. yeah, we heard the audio of it. So that and that made it a seven. Well, uh, I'm just gonna give it a seven on this, only because of that fashion show. Cause I laughed like I don't know what when Wendy and Candace was sitting up there talking about the fashion. Man, she said, who designed the Giselle design? And she said. Obviously, <laughs> she said. Obviously, baby, <laughs> they weak me. I could. I, I woo. I was in no condition after that. They weakened me on the inside with that one. Kai, one to ten. What you got for him? What you giving him? I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a six as well. I do though. One, I don't know if I missed this part in the live yet. And also, I didn't really see too much on social media. But we need to call it the mediocrity of this athleisure line that's already been done by Atlanta. Yes. And also, oh, you know that's that, next. I just wanted y'all to remember. But, I mean, since you, since you went into it, girl, go on, on into it. Because okay. you know I got to so, Shrey Aryan did this, been there, done that. You know, she had her moment. The fact that the next season, y'all pop up with this athleisure line that we have never heard y'all discuss before. Meanwhile, Ashley and so much as are the main ones who don't have a storyline on the show. The shiny, hot, cheap, stretchy looking fabrics walk down on this non existent runway and this, you know, propped up club. With spotlights not working and looking like Ashley's cooch is about to fall out how tight them shorts looked on her. And we are supposed to care. Meanwhile, the website is a merch website. There's about six products on that website and there's still a photo of them for Christmas with a beanie and a t-shirt on that says GNA. Six products. Not one of them grace that ungrateful walk one way. Not one of them is on there. And they still have a holiday collection with no hyperlink that works. No fall 2024 link that works. Six products. Socks, a tank top, a shirt, a baseball cap, and a beanie and something else. Thankfully, I forgot. All of it that just says GNA with a Christmas tree still on it. Girl, them clothes look like they finna go up in space on SpaceX. They better call uh, Elon Musk because them, them clothes look like a space suit. They don't make no sense. They look like they finna go to space. And girl, who buy them clothes. They just ridiculous because that ain't no way. Ain't no way I would spend my money on it. There's no possible I, way. I'm just saying they need to be lambasted like Shrey. You have this big opportunity. Y'all are Nicki Minaj, Rihanna tweeting, and all this kind of stuff. You are already doing athleisure line, which has already been done, dead, dusted. And you show up and on the my Giselle and Ashley are not even promoting it on their own Instagram. So you know that's not even real. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Now, I was letting y'all get it all out because I, you, you know, I got something to say. Go ahead, but say it. Go paper ahead. Paper to hear because Kai, you gave it to him, baby. Both barrels. Kudos. Kudos. Now, I want to address the monkey see, monkey do of it all. 
So when it's time to create a non-existent fraudulent storyline, they couldn't even be original in that. You literally had to steal from a black lady on RHOA. You stole the fake clothing line storyline from Sheree Whitfield. And to be quite honest, when Sheree first started, de decided to do it, she decided she was going to do it. And she called in Michael Knight, like I mentioned earlier, an actual designer. And she wanted to actually be able to do it. But we know Sheree don't like to pay people. So, you know, that didn't work out. He went on the glory. She by Sheree went on the shelf. And then we got spring, summer, fall, spring, summer, fall, many, many moons. And I think what we got on RHOA with She by Sheree was literally just, I want to do it so I can say that I finally finished it. So it'll stop being a joke spring, summer, fall. So these ladies decided, okay, we need to create a fake storyline, a fake story. So we're not going to come up with anything creative. We're just going to steal from the black girls. Like we don't like black women and that's clear, but we don't mind stealing from them. And then I think that the, the coup de gras of monkey see monkey do was that Wendy had to sit there and see the exact same outfit that she wore the knockoff version on their runway after she and after Giselle, after neck and shoulders, Giselle and Robert took it on themselves to make up a whole fake narrative about her being insecure about a lie about Eddie having a, a, a white pregnant elephant at his law office. And I do mean a pregnant elephant because the story at that time was two years old and they were still putting it out that the lady was still pregnant. I'm like, what is she giving birth to? An elephant and albatross the world what? Mammy water, like what is she carrying? Because who the hell stays pregnant for two years? And then they literally jacked the entire look. So even though they had that little weird guy there who's asking them about drawing something in on this shiny, this shiny cheap pillowcase fabric, anything he was making, you saw it. And you saw that and you said, yeah, put that out there knowing that you like this literally a knockoff of what that girl had on it was definitely giving monkey see monkey do not to mention the fact not to mention the fact that it's an embarrassment i said this about sheree and i'm going to say the exact same thing about them and i have no pity because in reality i gave it to sheree because it's the truth and since y'all want to copy her it goes for you too this is an embarrassment. The fact that you went on national or nay international television to put this out. And of course, whether we realize they're not black or not to the world, they are sh they're being shown and posited as, as black American women when they're not. OK, let's be very clear. But when you this, this is why representation is important. These people should not be allowed to be representation of us because they are not a representation of us. I don't care who doesn't like it. So they're out here cosplaying as us, putting garbage out and saying this is a fashion line. This is not only an insult, but this is actually it creates an obstacle to young black girls and young black men everywhere who are actual designers, who are actually serious about what they do, because whether we like it or not, the entire world sees us as a block. They very seldom give us any individuality. When one African-American, Black American person does anything, they say, see, look at them. They don't say, look at this person. They don't say, look at the home you came from. They say, see, that's what they do. Look at them. I pray. And that's all I can do because I have no pull in these shows. If I had any pull, I would have pulled a plug. But I pray that this is the last, and I do mean the last, we see of a China, China drop ship, uh, elevated Alibaba uh, curtain and bed sheet material outfit fashion show. I never want to see this again. This was horrible. This was low budget. This was cheap. This was unimaginative. This was uninspired. This was not creative. Even with all of that, it wasn't even your original thought. To do this horrible nonsense, it wasn't even it wasn't even your original thought. When you decided that you were going to copy someone else's idea, you literally copied the entire assignment. The only thing they didn't do was put Sheba Sheree on it, and that's and all. Have I an got. actual runway. <laughs> have an actual runway because this was pathetic. 
uh, also because I because you were talking, you were saying a piece, and you were you were lighting things up in my brain. Okay. okay. Giselle has not had one business venture by herself, which was the whatever hue for nobody. Because uh, I also follow a wonderful light skinned lady who who talked about colors, and she said she went to go try to support, and the thing was orange. She didn't even fit her hue. <clears throat> that was on the shelves for all the hot minute, and then was on the floor of Targets, and now it's nowhere to be seen. Ashley has never tried anything on her own. We've seen her do the restaurant, and what happened? In the flashbacks of her montage, her stumping her foot to Michael. If you close your restaurant, we were getting divorced. Baby, closed that restaurant, and y'all still married. Yeah. Giselle has now moved on to only do ventures with other castmates. And I think that's, I think it's because if it fails, at least she's not failing by herself. For one. Then right. Ashley. Ashley, to me, seems to be afraid to do anything on her own, which is why the restaurant has to be with Michael. You're on this show now. You can start your own little thing, right? Then mm -hmm. all these years, never doing anything. Everyone's like, oh, she's worth $5 million. She has a yoga on. Baby, we all know. I like to investigate. I want to go investigate. It was a merch line. Screen printed t-shirts. All of five options. Hadn't been trademarked since 2016 when she first got pregnant with Dean. Her own, her, even her own personal website has not been updated since she got pregnant with Dean. That's to show you how lazy of a heifer she is. But she acts like she, she acts like she likes to work hard, which she doesn't. Nothing had been updated since 2016. Remember, and then, she tried to knock off the fan idea from Candace. And that's what they mad about with Candy and Wendy because Candy and Wendy is they're actually intelligent they're actually literate they're, yeah and they're flourishing they're, they're doing what they need to do but can not, but not just them career? not okay, just baby. them karen is flourishing but i mean I karen. Karen. Yeah, yeah, I they all kept I for karen, um make i mean perfume line and she got a yeah. perfume line she don't want to go to the perfume when um, when manish took them to grass and she was here up to the perfume line that's what she called a man uh -huh. um hus called a later husband out saying she won he wanted a, a erica louse yeah. and that's what i understand with people they but want Cameron to be nice with to Giselle. Giselle has been really nasty to Karen. Karen, when Karen come back, me. it's from retaliation for what Giselle has said or did to her. But past that, y'all, you done went down the road. Kai, do you remember Ashley trying to knock off the fans from Candace? Okay, see, I was going down this road because I was going to say also, Ashley, you see that Ashley, she likes to be this free spirit person, but nothing seems to be original idea. She did the fan thing from Candace, then all of a sudden she was popping up doing drag shows when Karen was already doing that. Yeah, it's a lot so of money I, to see monkey do with her. Yes, and Chris and Candace both called, well, mainly Chris, because I uh, called out like, these fans look exactly like my wife, so what are you doing? And then her little weird competition with this music stuff. And now I'm saying you only get back into your music when the fact of the matter is now Candace is singing at the Lakers. <laughs> singing national anthem at the Lakers game. Uh-huh. Because now, Candace, saying, Candace is actually seriously pursuing music. And she's being, I won't say so much recognized because we all recognize everybody. But she's being um, relevant in other spaces. The fact that she was even able to sing the national anthem at a professional um, athletic performance. Like, that's a big deal. The fact that her open up for her, that's a big deal. The Doing, fact that, uh, you know, USA events and stuff like that, and like having her own billboard in New York Times by herself that had nothing to do with housewives. And right. I think to me, it's like, obviously I see the colors in them, but also to me, again, I grew up watching Housewives. So I grew up watching these women just be fabulous or which Housewives say no, finding their own way. I, even if I didn't like Candace's music, which I do, she has some good songs. They play Drive Back too much. There are some songs on that on that CD that get me, baby. But I like watching people actually say they want to do something and try their hardest to go at it. And so then when I see them, yeah, mm -hmm. and re regardless if you like it or not, you see her actually trying to go for it. Right. But meanwhile, you have a Candace and a, and a Giselle, who I feel like kind of fall into things, don't really try. And then when it fails, they don't even want to talk about it. Giselle has yet to really tell us what happened to every cute. Has he yet to actually tell us what happened? Not, Remember for COVID. Remember she lied and said it was liquid. She said it was the pandemic. Yep, she said mm -hmm. it was the pandemic. And that didn't track. What about the pandemic? Because Yes, because a lot of people down, made their money down because of the pandemic. Remember, but that like, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that was bull because literally a lot of people made their money during the pandemic. Like there, there were a lot of new millionaires made during the pandemic. If you had something to sell, um, yeah, because folks was buying stuff online of, instead of going like, to the stores. But literally, there were a whole lot of new millionaires made during the pandemic. She literally used that as a cop-out. Kai, like you said, she gave absolutely no 
input, no backstory on what happened to every hue. Why did it fail? Um, why was it bad? Why was it on the floors and targets? Like there were so many questions and she didn't answer none of them, but she's got a lot of like input and talk. Even when it came to Mia and Gordon and his family taking the business back over and like taking their name off stuff and doing the little shady business. She's like, well, that's, it sounds like embezzlement. Well, tell us what's the story on every hue because we don't know what their story is other than those people decided to remove their name and now he's got a fight in court with his family. But we know more about that than what happened to you. Were you embezzling? Did someone embezzle from you? Like, did the stores tell you, look, take this crap back and give us our money back? Did the stores <laughs> say keep the money but don't send it for that garbage? Like, what the hell happened, Giselle? She probably well, like, would get a percentage anyway because... You know, once they uh, broadcast their business on um, Bravo or the Housewives, Bravo get a, a, a percentage of their uh but, of their. But there's uh, no. But this is the thing. But there's and no. And then percentage. she had like how many five investors? So but how this much is money the she thing. got coming in? But there's no percentage of zero dollars. That's not my point. My <laughs> point is she did not tell us what happened. Kai, you were about to say something. What, what well, I was going to say even with Atlanta, we watch. You know, regardless of like, can you not? She talked about how like you know she couldn't get her bottles from China. She had to go with the U.S. factory. That was going to be more money. How, how she got, that was something. Giselle literally gave us nothing. And then Ashley. Ashley never talked about what happened with her and Michael in the restaurant. Why did it close? Okay, did, when it closed, how we guys? How are you guys able to still stay married? Because you said that you were going to stay married to him if he closed the restaurant on you. I remember that episode where that man walked into that restaurant and told everybody she is not in charge. Right. I remember that. I but remember that. that. Like wild stuff is happening. And, and to me, right. I'm thinking there was no story. No, no. Okay. She just you popped up all the time now. Uh-uh, cause cat. You gotta let Kai finish. We out of the one at a time, else I'm not gonna hear nobody. Now, can I finish up? Okay. No, I was gonna say like I I've heard a few people who are in the DMV DM, DM air say like oh it had a nice feel to it because Ashley had been a bartender and all kinds of stuff before so it's not like it was completely and totally out of her wheelhouse. Um, she did some nice brunches and stuff like that. She was having some nice events there, so it is kind of wild that Michael closed that thing on her. Like that is wild. And my thing is also we have this running joke about Wendy and her businesses. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Her book came out. She went on book tour. Now she's having a paperback book tour. Her book came out. What what are we arguing about? The candles came out. They're on sale. I see people buying them. So to me, I also don't like the fact that like, oh, Wendy's always coming with a new business venture. And I do get um if someone comes on the show hawking something the first season, but she didn't do that. She waited till the next season. And to me, the book was not something that she just all of a sudden just popped up and wrote. That was a very personal story about her, about her backstory. And so to me, I'm like, I've seen her do her things. And then the fact of the matter is it's on production to keep those storylines going. And we obviously oh. see that they don't, they keep pushing them to do, to just talk about the new things and not talk about the old things. We don't even really see, if it wasn't for Karen's nickname being the Grand Dom, we would not, we would not really be hearing about La Dom. Because the names are so tied, you keep thinking about the perfume. But if you think about it, Karen actually doesn't talk about the perfume that much. And I think it's because it's a failure of production to really make sure that we're not seeing these, that we see the women's lives as continuous and not just in complete seasons. Okay. And real quick, and then we go into cat. Don't forget Wendy's t-shirts because they're on her website. And I got one because my sister, one of my dear sisters bought me one, the one that says Slither. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, I remember that. So I have a Slither t-shirt. I do. Now, Kat, what you was about to say? Kat. Oh, I was just saying, like, um, with uh, Giselle and that um, that makeup, child, that stuff went out of production because, uh, like I said, she had too many investors. And like you said, Sinitra, zero from zero means nothing, so she wasn't making any money. And what happened to her book? We only seen that in, what, season three when she had, uh, no, four. When, no, five, when she had went and got the uh the award. But has anybody really, really read that book? I mean, like, or did they give her that award because it was she was Giselle? Because I really don't believe she um she really won it fair, but I'm just saying. But either way, they um they're clowns. Her, Robin, uh Ashley, uh Gizzard, all of them are just clowns. They do stuff and look at Robin. When she was doing her hats and stuff, she didn't even want to get out of bed. She said these people wanted her to place orders with them, but she didn't want to do it. It was just ridiculous. They lazy. And see, Giselle feels like she don't have to put in a lot of work because she's pretty and she thinks she can just get away by, just by being pretty 
and everything's gonna fall in her way. But that's not gonna happen. She has to do some hard work because she always got over because of the way that she looked. And that's ridiculous and pathetic. Like just to she... say beauty fades and dumb is forever. But let me ask this question. Did she really get over? Because her life don't look like she got over. She think she got over. She thinking it. But we know she has she... it. But can we be she honest? I don't, I, don't, I don't think that she does. I think that's why she's bitter. I think mm -hmm. she's bitter because she had an expectation, but it didn't happen. Yeah, she was thinking I, like, I'm pretty, I'm doing this. Believe. Yeah, she I think like, she I'm had pretty, I'm doing this. And... I think she okay. had an expectation in her life that things would be handed to her and they were not. It, it wasn't. I think her first huge mistake was marrying Jay Mo, but it didn't work out that way for her. And I think that's why she is incredibly bitter. I think it bothers her because she's, she still has that feeling that it should have gone that way for her. And then to see these actually black presenting women, these phenotypically black women mm -hmm. um, have lives that she feels like she should have just by virtue of being pale and recessive that mm -hmm. she doesn't have. And I think that's what's making her extremely bitter. I don't think Giselle Bryan has got over it, gotten over it all. No, I'm saying I think the closest, that way. hold on. I don't think she has. I don't think she thinks so. I think she knows very much that she didn't get over at all. I think that's why she's angry. I think the closest that Giselle Bryan has ever gotten to getting over was getting cast for this show. And that was by the skin of her teeth by Big Reese. She has never gotten over the, the, the yellow privilege never paid her the way she thought it would. It never, it just didn't. And I think she's really bitter and really nasty about it. I think that's why she's so venomous. I think that's why she doesn't mind lying. I think that's why she's so hateful and grudge for hearted because the way our community, and I do mean black American people, the way our community is set up, very much colorism comes into play. It is the little sister of racism. And I think that it does set an expectation that your proximity to whiteness should give you benefits and privilege that your darker counterparts should not have access to. And I think that because that is a system that is that it does happen, it's not right, but it does happen. I think the fact that it did not happen for her feeds into the nastiness that we see just reverberating off of this lady that's what's coming off of her is the fact that it has happened nine times out of ten but she was the one time out of ten and mm -hmm. it didn't happen for her it yeah, just you know i'm thinking like when she's in school I'm, I'm quite sure she got over a lot of stuff when she was in school and college that's, that's what really? talk about. I'm but, probably, why, I'm, but but we can only talk about what we know and we see no evidence that, in her life. i mean that's true too but i'm just saying um, i'm quite sure she probably did but what but I'm saying is now is she, you know, because in school, okay, I'm not gonna go there. But you right on that part. She don't. She hasn't got over. She hasn't got over. But I'm saying, like in school, you know, they always used to go for the the, the uh, light skinned girl with the green eyes and uh, the long hair and all that type of stuff. I'm just saying. But what I'm saying is now, but men, she's but trying men to realize, like, like why is it not working getting... now? She's trying to figure but, out why it ain't working is, now. This is what I'm saying. It never worked for her. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to give her a break. But but we don't we don't do give a break. We do tell the truth. And the facts is, the facts are it never worked for her. Men finding you attractive is not getting over. And I don't know when the black community is gonna wake up and think and realize that men, black men desiring you is not a win. It's not. And I think that maybe stuff like that, you know, fed into her notion that privilege was coming. It was going to happen. The world would be her oyster. But having black men desire you sexually is not a win. I'm going to just say that. I'm going to put that out there. It's not. That's true. Mm -hmm. But in her mind, she's thinking it is. I don't think she does. I think as a child, she I, really... I think as a child, she enjoyed the attention because young girls enjoy attention. But I think that it never worked for her. It still is not working for her now. I think that's why she's so salty about the colorism charges that are being brought up on Bravo herself, Robert, and the rest of Team Yellow. Because it's like, okay, she's seeing that the public at large is not 
subscribing to colorism and uh, and giving her the privilege that she feels she deserves. We are looking at someone who the system within all of its corrupt glory is not working the way she was led to believe it was going to work. It simply did not work for her. It never did. Let, case in point, she ended up married to Jamal Thank Ryan. You. Thank you. <laughs> You ended up married to Jamal Bryant for crying out loud. It never worked for you because had it worked for her, she'd have ended up with a Michael Jordan or a Scottie Pippen or a Horace Grant or a Patrick Ewing or God forbid, even a, even a Charles Barkley. But no, it never worked for her. She ended up with Jamal Bryant. And according to the scuttlebutt, a few random drug dealers. It never worked for her. Not for one day. And that's unfortunate. I'm just saying. I you know, I, I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people focus on the men romantic aspect of colorism and not to see that the main place that Giselle weaponizes colorism is in her female relationships and female situations um the stories well obviously I wasn't there but you know even her best friend said just how she was so mean in college when people were pledging all that kind of stuff that is where Giselle is able to really hold power because I feel like people forget that yes colorism is marriage but the, at the end goal of marriage is because women for a very long time weren't able to have their own money get education so that was your safety net to living a life it so it deals with friendships work it, it deals with so much more than who you're laying down in bed with and that's where we see Giselle wield her power of her being able to like act like she's a head girl in charge meanwhile her life her life is one of the saddest on the tv show yeah, when your only when your only value, your only like currency is I can make a man look in my direction, that's sad. That's some sad business because quite frankly, men will look at anything. Men mm -hmm. will look at anything. It is not a flex to get a man. Like I don't know who needs to know this, but it's not a flex. Anybody under the sound of my voice, if you are confused, okay, I'm gonna say this three times for you okay okay three times you ready attention from a man is not a flex attention from a man is not a flex attention from a man is not a flex okay let that sink into your spirit okay accept that that's gonna bless you and someone's like you know oh sorry these men will literally sleep with anything. They will literally sleep with a hole on the beach. I've heard stories, okay? Animals, each other, anything. So stop thinking that attention from a man is the be all end all. Once a man pays you some attention, you've made it. You have not. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Um, Cause I was gonna say, someone said, oh, Jamal had potential. Jamal never had potential and being a good partner for the fact that she was walking down the aisle and he already had a baby on her. <laughs> What potential? Right. right. And, and I'm assuming it's, it's the right. I watch a lot of true crime. This is kind of slightly left field. In Singapore, Singapore, there was a whole racketeering of men who were essentially getting give, giving up their wives to be SA'd by their other friends, recording all kinds of stuff and never told. And the wife found out by accident because he fell asleep watching one of the videos. Men will do whatever they want to do with women. Like, and anything it, it with animals, with inanimate yes. objects, yes. you name it. So it's getting perfect. attention from a degenerate male. It's not a flex. And the fact that Giselle's brain is stuck there, it just shows that there's a level of trauma. She was traumatized by her lack of privilege. It traumatized her. See, that's the other side I of colorism that. that people, yeah, that, that is the other side of colorism that people do not have the conversation about because it victimizes our beautiful dark girls. And it also victimizes some beautiful light complected girls. Because <laughs> if you have that mindset, especially if you're being raised by a colorist like Daddy Graves, you've been led to believe that you are entitled to certain privilege. And when it doesn't happen, no one talks about the effect on the psyche of those girls. Mm -hmm. No one talks, And that's just one aspect. There's also the aspect of 
uh, some of our beautiful darker melanated sisters who can at times become bitter because of their mistreatment. And sometimes, a lot of times, because a lot of black women live their lives for the black male gaze, and I mean gaze as in their eyesight, that they become bitter and sometimes they will take out their aggression against lighter complected ladies because their their bitterness is, is directed toward them because they feel as though they have the attention from these men and their entire life is based on the attention of these men. So there, there, you know, colorism is anytime you see ism, it's a system. It's not just an attitude or an opinion. This system is problematic and it harms everyone who participates in it. It harms our darker sisters for them being marginalized, erased and removed and their lack of representation and their lack of respect and a lack of even acknowledgement of their beauty just mm -hmm. in and of itself. But it also victimizes our lighter complected sisters because those of which those of whom that are actually our sisters and I'm not talking about people who are not black women who just, you know, throw themselves into that space to benefit from colorism, but actually light complected black women, they suffer because of the, like I said, sometimes the misdirected aggression from some of the darker sisters who are still living for the male gaze, who take their anger out on the on the object of these men's affection. And they also suffer in situations where they are raised by colorists who give them an unreal expectation of the world. So I feel as though this is why I said when Bravo had that little short snippet of a segment during a, a reunion about colorism, I felt like that was not only ill-advised, it was irresponsible. Because this conversation is too nuanced. There's too many victims. There's too many ways that it harms Black people for it not to be a full-on think tank forum of a conversation. Like it need, you know, if it, you know, I personally, I don't know that we ever need the conversation because I feel like once we leave the conversation, some people are still going to engage. Some of us will still refuse to engage in it. But if you're going to have the conversation, then it should be had in total. Not this little thing like, oh, we'll read a definition. We'll say, oh, I don't think you are. I don't think you are moving along. That is not a conversation on colorism. Mm -hmm. This show is fraught with it. I'm sorry. Let me get off my soapbox. What y'all think? Um, I will say, I'll, I will clarify that colorism does not go both ways. It just you know impacts people. It impacts everybody. But the way in which colorism works, mm, um. But it is true, as I said, like, I feel like people really get stuck on that whole just like it's about men. It's about men. I'm like, it's about love and attention and want to be felt and seen and be respected. And those come in all different ways, which is why, again, we see Giselle acting this way still when there's no man essentially involved in this situation. Of like, These are just supposed to be your girlfriends and she can't even do that. And Ramu's humanity, because my thing is like people, you know, some people are like, oh, well, Wendy was so nasty what she said about Giselle. I'm like, Giselle was the same lady who wouldn't even look at Wendy threw her hand across the reunion stage and said, I didn't care about her getting attacked because I don't like her. Like that is stripping right. the their community. Like I don't like no morals, no standards. And now it comes time for her father, unfortunately. And all when he says like, I don't have nothing for her. I, I'm not going to say nothing. Cause like she, she just has put herself in a position where she seems inhuman because she's going to give humanity to anyone else. Mm-hmm. And so when this yeah. time comes, I'm like, I'm trying to see how, what, what it's going to be on the reunion. I want Winnie to stand in it. Because my thing about it is, even with that whole face thing, I, I would bet, first of all, I, I question if the faces were cut in of like later on in different conversations. But also, let's not forget in that but conversation I about, about right? faces. Like, I, I wouldn't yeah, care. I don't but care about like, I, in this but, situation, I am definitely Karen Huger in this situation. Like Karen said, y'all all make faces when the other one is talking. So what's the difference? I don't care no difference. that they made care. faces. I don't care. I think it's funny I mean, that people can't... ignore the fact that the fact is when Giselle first started that conversation, Karen's congratulate Grace and Giselle paid it dust. So the idea that people did care about the faces is what gets me because Candace clearly said congratulations and Giselle paid her dust. So now all of a sudden y'all are up hoopla and oh my God, I can't believe she did that to Grace and da 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 because they're making faces now when the girl already Nobody congratulated her and Giselle ignored her. Right. And, and, see, that's and the point. You know, I'm sorry. 
Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I know. That's the point. They wasn't making a face about <laughs> Grace. They was making a face because Giselle was talking. It had nothing to we do all with know. the girl. We all know. But it was the weaponization of that system. I'm going to be seen as a victim if I put myself up against you because you're darker. Period. Period. That's what that was. So the only thing I could say, because you didn't say anything that I could pick apart and and pretend offended me. Um, the bottom line is, I'm going to say I'm a victim of you making a face. And this is what I was saying about that whole situation with Mia and um, Nick Nack, Patty Wack, give a dog a bone. It was basically the black ladies on the show get their entire facial muscles analyzed. But when it's her, she could do something that was that <laughs> ugly. And because she she has a complexion that gives her more proximity because she is a non-black woman, that it was it was perfectly okay. It was acceptable. Like that was fine. Go for it. Just like she gets away with lying every every season every episode backwards forwards front backwards and it's a big joke and everybody's laughing and kiki and grinning and it's cool it's normal me me be lying blah 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 ha 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 phaedra repeated a rumor and we are how many years later and everybody phaedra is a liar phaedra's a get a hot show she need to go she's a liar for repeating a rumor she said someone told someone told her that 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 was said not that i heard you say it not that she pointed and said you for shame she said somebody told me you said it she repeated a rumor and got called a liar this non-black woman this large hispanic gentleman lies on a regular basis and everyone acts like it's cute it's funny and she doesn't just tell silly lies like oh i you know somebody paid me to put my huge flipper in their chest she tells lies like oh she 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 um showed me her vaginal area and I could touch it. Um, this one called you a weak bee. Like she tells damaging lies. Damaging yeah, lies that she breathes. It's just ridiculous. And you're right. And like I was saying, well, she can get away with it because she's not a black woman. That's what I was saying. Same thing. Like Even though she lies on black women. Yeah, that's the same thing I was saying. Like what you in, like what you were saying, but Phaedra and Portia. Portia never said you was going to do this. She said, I heard you was going to do this to me. But I'm not even talking about Portia because Phaedra is the one that they're tagging. Yeah, Phaedra, oh, yeah, but they gave Phaedra, you a lot of time too, though. But, yeah, this, said, but yeah. I, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about Phaedra because we're still talking about this 2024. People, what you did to Candy. What the hell did she do to Candy? She said, somebody told me you said it. I heard it. Yeah. I repeated what I heard. But because, yeah. but because, even though Phaedra is accomplished, she's a business, a businesswoman, business owner. She she has her coin. She's a whole lawyer. Say say what you will or may like a lover or a hater. She is somebody. This this is the girl who was dating the ex mayor of Atlanta. She's somebody. Okay. She repeated a rumor, got called a liar, and ain't nobody, and they're still dragging it all the way to 2024. And yet, you got me a line on black women telling damaging lies, filthy lies, and it's a joke and it's funny. And that is why Bravo is never going to beat the colorism charge or the racism charge, because that that point is not even colorism, because me is not black. This is a racism issue. This is a discrimination issue. Uh, you were saying? Yeah, I was gonna say that um because then it also puts the you know unambiguous brown and dark skinned black woman in a position where you have to swallow for the fact that you know it's like you can't win. When he's watching nope. happens black people are so nasty, she's so hateful, da 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 because she's finally matching Giselle's energy. But when she wasn't matching Giselle's energy, people are like, You're a pick me. All you just want to be a part of the light school clique. But like what am I supposed to do? Because if I don't if I give her the same energy, I'm a hater, I'm nasty, I'm holding gorgeous, I'm a bitter black woman. 
just just so mm-hmm. ungrateful and nasty and so rude and mean to her. But if I try to, you know, say, this is a TV show, this is my job, let's kind of move forward. Oh, you're a pick me, you're trying to be a part of the crew. Oh, I can't, I can't feel for her because, oh, they said, I don't know. I'm like, but they shouldn't be in a position to, they should not be in this position. Candace should not be in a position to have to keep going back and forth with Ashley, someone whose husband was violating people on set at their job. She should, should not be in the position to go back and forth with her. They have to, you know, somewhat be friends with her. Then, of course, Ashley does something when Candace reads her, her rights. Oh, Candace went too far. See, Candace didn't have to say that. Candace didn't have to bring up Michael. Candace didn't have to do this. Well, because when you're a black woman, you're held to a standard, an, an, an impossible standard. That you have to be perfect in every way. You are not allowed to be human, to be flawed, to have emotions. You're not even allowed to be hurt when some, like they can stab you and you better not bleed. Like you just better sit there and be perfect. Like literally what they did to our dear, precious Angela Bassett because she was disappointed she didn't win an award. Oh, we're going to demonize you because how dare you show your disappointment? You're supposed to be happy that we took something that really by rights, by anybody's estimation, easily could have been yours. Like, how dare you be disappointed? You don't get to have human emotion because in, in a sense, a lot of these people really don't see us as human. They don't. And when we point it out, you're complaining. When we hold them to the when they when we hold their feet to the fire and we successfully articulate our issue, then we're being mean. We're bullying them when they're not able to keep up with us intellectually. And this is the impossible standard. Even when we don't speak, they'll analyze your facial muscles. They'll analyze your expressions. They will analyze you all the way down to taking a urine sample in a guayac. But others, the other box and clear people and clear adjacent folks, they don't live under the same scrutiny. They do not live under the same microscope at all. They just Cause, don't. Yeah, because let's also remember Candace was the main one, but Candace when you're being blamed for all oh, this short this show's getting too serious. Oh, they keep bring up colors and to explain away everything. Da, da, da. Mind you, again, Ashley and Katie were the first ones to call Giselle and um, Robin's anti-blackness and colorism. Were the first ones at, when they used to have those blogs. Ashley was ripping apart Giselle about how she was talking about her hair and about how Ashley was feeling insecure about where her hair color color. Co- I'm sorry, my brain. You know, I already talked fast. My brain going a mile a minute. She's wearing, she started wearing her hair curly and she had met Michael, her hair straight. And Michael had never seen her hair not straight. And the first thing Giselle mm-hmm. did when she met her, was her bushy hair. It was a big bush come to me. Ashley and Kate were the first ones to call that ish out. But now it's, oh, Candace is always talking about this color. So she always bringing it up. And then when Candace says, you know what? I think I just want them to acknowledge it because there's obviously there's something going on. I think they play a part in the way that the audience reacts to it. But I don't know if anyone's colorist. Oh my God. Now she's going to stay with her chest. That's what they do. Like, it's a system. Like, literally, we're dealing with a system. That's why I don't deal with the, oh, does it go both ways? It's a system. A system affects everybody who participates or is affected by the system. There is no one way or the other way. It's not going the way of the dark girl or going the way of the light girl. This is a system. And because it is a corrupt system, because it is based on white supremacy, racism, it is damaging to everyone who participates in it. I don't care where you sit on the melanocyte scale. It affects you negatively because it is a negative system. Am I foolish enough at my big age to think that anything's going to change? No, I don't think so. But I think that we have a responsibility to point it out. And I think we also have a responsibility to support our sisters who are in situations like this, who are pointing it out, who are being demonized for pointing it out, and to use our voices, whatever they're worth. And like I said, y'all have done an excellent job on social media of, you know, giving support for these ladies calling out what they're passing through. I just think that that's, that's the only thing we can do at this point is hold them accountable, you know, at least in social media with our voices, with our platforms. Yes, and stop letting people sit on a pedestal because people, oh, Giselle doesn't care, she has an ice queen. I'm like, I remember last year at BravoCon where apparently, the well, not even apparently, because I saw it when people were um, 
like live streaming uh one of the like you new know, shows that he was doing and Annie made a, a joke about Giselle's dressing about how like oh the set looks better than um, a housewife's outfit something like that everyone laughed whatever then though on the recording where you could you know watch on a peacock the next couple of days the joke wasn't in there and Annie's on his reunion show on his um radio show talking about like oh yes the housewife she was really upset she really didn't like it she asked to take it down and da 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 so this idea that homegirl does not care is a flat lie well, we knew, girl, we knew that's a lie, that reunion with um, Monique and her binder, because they got out that she blew up and was cursing, dropping F-bombs and all. They didn't show it, but like, oh, no, you care, Suge. You're just not intelligent enough to to verbally spar with anyone. You're not smart enough. Yeah, and it was like, oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh, I, all Candace says is, is neck and ankles. I'm sorry, baby girl. Neck and ankles went viral. Neck and ankles was the word of the, of the street from this Bravo con. Gisela had to be at her work trip where Andy passed a mic to Candace and let Candace scream in front of all these Bravo celebrities and celebrities who love Bravo. Because let's not forget, celebrities were going to BravoCon just hanging out. And that girl screamed neck and, goodbye, neck and ankles. Not today, Nick. Not today. So the idea that like also like oh they just don't no it's just like you don't have to do much with Giselle you don't have to yeah. do much because she's just she's so bottom of the barrel when it comes to this now she has nice the jokes now right the yeah. jokes yeah, right she has some good mean girl ways she can strategize a little bit but I think she her strategies have won its course because now it's reaching a level where you know we have Essence magazine stones kind of stuff and obviously not everything's going to change and Bravo is still Bravo but Bravo also cares about money well I and think. Then, I think also with with Giselle's strategies, with neck and ankle strategies, um, they're predictable. And I think at this point, everybody can telegraph your moves. And so that's why it's it's so the the audience has seen you move like that so much that they're over it. And I think that her castmates have seen it so much that they can telegraph her moves and head her off at the pass. Hence why this season we have witnessed Karen, Candace, and Wendy immediately when something happens call them on it make them have to say something in the moment and if they, if they can't they did it and it's like they don't even give them time to think up how they're going to do whatever like they just confront on the moment cut it dead on the spot and that's why she's been outflanked this entire season um another thing though with Giselle being as dumb as she is on this show I don't want and this is what I don't want to see happen I don't have any control, but I think I can say what I would like not to see happen. I don't want to see this give an impression for our people to, you know, look at other light complected black women and say that, you know, you're automatically nasty because you share a complexion with this person. There are so many beautiful, strong, I mean, phenomenal black women who are that complexion and even lighter. Um, I don't want people to get the impression that, okay, that that complexion means any of those negative connotations like, oh, she's, she, she must be dumb because she's that complexion or she must be simple minded or she must be evil or she must be a liar. Like I want us to start seeing each other as, as much as we have closeness, as much as we have a connection that other people will never understand. Um, I want people to see us as individuals. You know what I mean? Every sister that's my complexion and darker ain't down for the cause. And every sister that's her complexion or lighter is not a lying piece of colorist, airheaded trash. Like, is we're individuals. And so when we play into that stuff, then we're actually taking part and we're participating in that same system that is damaging to all of our sisters. So I don't want to see that happen either. Like that's not what I want to see happen. We look at we look at this cast alone. We're looking at Karen Huger here, who is clearly lighter complected than Giselle, but she doesn't exhibit those nasty, evil, bitter, colorist behaviors. Like she doesn't. So I don't want to see this episode, not this episode, but this season, any other seasons going forward, if they don't get canceled, fingers crossed. Um, what we saw last season where it turned into um, platforms of lighter complected ladies making a bunch of rude, ignorant statements about darker complected women. And I don't want to see our sisters who are more beautifully blessed with melanin um, making a lot of real ugly blanket statements about lighter complected sisters either. Now these tramps on this show, 
then let's talk about it because they're showing us something that we can talk about. You, you know what I'm saying? We it's talking about these well, hooks. It's the individual because I think it's, it's, the also, it's like we talk about the system and I, and I do think we can't get what past the fact that like a lot there is a history of a lot of people participating in the system and want yeah. to get all the benefits they can from the system but you still in your individual life approach everyone as an individual and give them the chance to show them who they are who, who they are to you but these have are showing us who they are yeah also, and th there you go and that is the key that is the nail on the head they're showing us who we are so we're addressing what they're doing and who they are but I don't want to see that great divide because last season of Potomac was exhausting in the amount of division, especially amongst black women. And of course, there were black men waiting to jump into it um, because they are some of the biggest perpetuators of colorism in our community, unfortunately, but it's just the truth. Eh. Um, so, the, of course, a lot of them were ready to jump in. Oh, y'all is just jealous of them because we like them. No, we don't want you things to like us. A lot of us, we really don't. Um, but, you know, they were ready to jump in with their, you know, trademark, branded, copyrighted ignorance. But I don't want to see another divide like that because that that defeats the point. And then at that point, we're all in the mud, slinging mud like pigs. That's not the point. Talk about who's doing it, their character, what they're doing, who they are. And it should never turn into an all out free for all, a dog fight between black women based on complexion. Because that feeds into the very system that we're pissed off about and we don't want nothing to do with, if that makes sense. It does. I don't know if I missed it. Um about did, did y'all talk about um Mia and Gordon sit down and Mia talking about that he drained her account or whatever. Yes, we talked about that. And I actually um when the sneak peek came out, I actually played the audio so y'all could hear that she said something different before, which oh. was that well, they both did, and they were in front of the therapist. And when she mentioned it, Gordon was like, I didn't know about it, you know, I didn't know about that, or whatever. And so now the story has switched. And then when she made that statement, she did not make that statement in front of the therapist so that Gordon could correct it or rebut. She said it in the confessional so that he had no defense. If you recall the first therapy session, when she tried to use the abuse word, he put a stop to it. Like, let's just make it clear. I've never put my hands on you. And I'm so glad that he did that during that session. But I think because he immediately corrected the lie that she was trying to put out the narrative she was trying to create. I think that this time she didn't say it in the therapy session, but she absolutely wanted to make sure that she put that accusation against him in the confessional so that he could not rebut or defend himself. And that way she could put a narrative out to, to give an excuse for why she's running off with somebody else instead of just telling the truth. I was there for the money. You provided it. I took it. And now the money's gone. And so am I. And I don't have a problem with that. Let me be very clear. I think that's perfectly OK. When you are grown exactly. old man and you have exactly. a wife and you leave your wife for a hooker from a strip club from the evening gown, lobster and steak strip club. Then whatever you get, you get you bought and paid for. Once the money's gone, you can no longer make the payment, sir. What did you think was going to happen? But mm -hmm. instead of telling the truth. Now she wants to create a narrative to make herself the victim and him the villain okay. and to make her, you know, look more okay, This is where her lies come to play. Because the thing about is, her. yeah, because the thing about it is, the reason why I always got bothered by me is because she lied, she, she does a lot of lying to be emotionally manipulative, which is what I can't get with. Because it always is like, Oh, if she if, like that first season, oh, if she come, if um, if my mom relapses, she gonna meet me outside and trying to. She likes to tug and pull on emotional strings on this kind of stuff. Um, she likes to be a victim. Yeah, and like I, what me, Gabor, even you, I think we said you no. Know, she has orphan spirit on her. It's just, it just, it's never, it's never her truly. <laughs> what? What? No, it's. I'm gonna tell you why I laugh. I laugh because I literally wrote little orphan Annie in my notes. Oh, when she started yeah, yeah. pulling at, oh, he was being aggressive and 
and and I dealt with that in the foster homes all my childhood, and I didn't have. I said, "Oh, here come little orphan Annie." It's always such a grand story for everything, and then also again, the fact of the matter is, it's always changing. And I think people are like, "Oh, it's cute," but to me, it's not cute when it comes to things that like I'm supposed to care about. You know, like every once in a while, if you tell a little a little sprinkle of a lie on your business, or like you know, Karen saw my oh Ray is allergic. Maybe Ray's not allergic, but she don't feel like going to Teresa's house, and she don't feel like explaining herself. You know, things like that I can get with. But you are trying to make me feel you you want me to feel for you which is why you're lying mm-hmm. and I then I need to know why you're lying what's the real truth because again you're 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 so proud to be a hoe one day but then the next day you're a CEO boss and you didn't marry Gordon for money and then the next day you're you're a stripper inheritance and you have more money than him just just was an asset but he was dropping 10k on you and that's nothing so uh, that's where I just I have to leave her on the playground where she resides because I don't know what's happening and as you said, she said that stuff in the confessional, not in front of him. And I caught that when she did that. Because to me, she a, lot of very- people didn't. a lot of people didn't, Kai. They were on mm. social media. I don't know anybody who does that. That's, that's it. That's financial abuse. And I'm like, are y'all even thinking about this? And one of our sisters in the chat, I can't remember who I wish I did. If you're watching this, sis, let me know it was you. Somebody made the point. He couldn't drain an account that what didn't have his name on it. So you mean he moved his own money? It's like, what are you even saying? And I don't believe you. But even if he moved money, he couldn't move any money that didn't have his name on it. So yeah, how- it's just. And my thing is, okay, maybe it was that you know, okay, he's not making money. She was like, this was an account. Yes, it was our joint account, but I was the only one putting money in there, and he went behind my back and took out money that he didn't tell me about. That's something. But you just sitting there talking about. Oh, yeah, he drained my account, as you said. Was his name on it? Was it your joint account? Were you both putting money in it? Like, what was this? And so that's why I can never get with her because, again, she does it. She always ends up doing doing it for a sob story. And that bothers me because I just feel, I don't know why. I just, I don't like lies like that. That really bothers me because to me, it's like, it's a, an excuse for you to treat people terribly, throwing drinks at people, tossing bags at people, losing nails and all this kind of stuff, posting videos of your best, whereas of Jacqueline, her being fake, she did though, was real life, posting that video of that girl girl going through that time with her with her you know, ex-husband while her father like it oh, just it's just child. I don't feel for that that could probably told her here girl no, is you post I don't this one. feel for her but it's just I that's the kind of person told her is. Which one she could post her and Jackie are definitely oh, in they in it together Take but yeah Jackie I just I don't mean I don't do me did you see them tonight on the show laughing and Kiki and like nothing happened like they literally made yeah, up they're a weird. Scenario last week to explain why they're gonna try to put her back on the camera and their buddy buddy. Y'all yeah, buddy, no buddy. Was a, I told y'all last year that this was fake and it was a plot to try to get her on the show. I told y'all. I told you. Stuffy. Yeah, I just I just I just don't don't like me. It's I I think she could be a friend. I also reason why too it kind of bothers me is because she can come on here look like a completely different person than these old photos from um say yes to the dress mm-hmm. and completely different shade completely different nose mouth face looking like teddy perkins as someone says on the internet um i think erica De- De Niro tv and it's all cool you know she's just you no know, living her life that's just me when he gets a mommy maker all of a sudden oh baby child she ain't got no she- substance all of a sudden you know, she's just an airhead idiot, which I do think that when you try to find a balance of being her carefree self and then being the person that Bravo hired her to be. But my thing is, like, no one gave her grace for that. Meanwhile, Mia could be the hoe one day and the CEO shuffling papers in an office that she clearly has never been in before. And I it's fine. I didn't even see that with, with, with Wendy. I saw, I got my body done, I'm going to show off my body. Like, her degrees did not go in the garbage. She did not become an airhead. She did not become ditzy. And she proved it because the minute them hookers pulled the stunt, she let them know that the professor was still in the building. Clearly. I, but I but think, it was the minute she changed anything on herself, she lost all substance. This heifer, Mia, literally during it took a Brillo pad and scraped what little bit of black she got from her mama off. She ain't had but a half teaspoon and she scrubbed it off, made her skin look like some stucco. Or a popcorn ceiling, like just ripped her skin to shreds to get that little bit of black she had off. And we're saying Wendy has no substance. 
Yeah, because I'm like, oh, baby, that confessional that me is in with that orange and that silver piece going down, I'm sorry. It looks a mess. And I have not really seen anyone talk about it, but I'm sorry. The 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 lips are too plump, the teeth and the, the skin. And she she looking every bit of a hoe from baddies. She like she belong on Zeus. I can't say what she looked like because that would not be Oh see. So you're gonna leave me out here to dry by myself. That's what you're doing. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. She looks horrible, but I, I would love to say what she really looks like. But oh, it, it wouldn't be nice. All right, all right. It would not be nice, but I will, I will say it to you in the inbox on Instagram. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, ooh, it, was, it just, it just looks so tawdry. So, ugh, it, ugh. I'm just like, this is not it cute. Looks real cheap. It looks real cheap and Fashion Nova stripperish. Like, it just. Yes. It's not, not a good oh, thing. What was that? oh, was it on Wii TV or, or Lifetime that show about like after the poll, about like pole dancers? <laughs> she really did like after the poll. That's what she looks like she belonged on. I'm just. That's cool. That's and, cool. and no one's talking about it yet, but I've been wanting to talk about it because I'm sorry. Every time that confessional pops up, I said, oh. Yeah, I didn't understand that orange from day one. I was like, ooh, girl. And the cutout, and then the metal pieces in the middle of the chesticles. And the... <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot with that orange. It was. <laughs> the only thing, I think the only outfit more tragic is um, Robert in that lavender with them feathers on her shoulder. That is got to be one of the most tragic looks I've ever seen. Mac, why are you telling us to go to bed? We about to get off of here soon, but where you been? I know we chatting. Us to go to bed. Yeah, because we ain't staying here all night. We've been here three hours. So final thoughts <laughs> from you and what's your Kai, you go first. What's your final thoughts? My final thoughts. Um, I feel like there should not have been a to be continued for this episode. You should have just shown the clip and let's keep it moving. Um, mm-hmm. Ashley's gotta go. I feel like Giselle's gotta go. They, they gotta go. They're they're not offering anything. I'm sorry. I I I it really clicked for me the fact that this is the exact same storyline as Atlanta last year, and maybe that's why we didn't see them pick. Mon- we didn't see them do really anything because it would have been co- a full on copy and exact pace of what the scenes we saw from Atlanta. You know, mm-hmm. and I feel like we should incorporate more of the women. I think that Housewives is missing the piece where it, it's about the friend groups, but a lot of earlier seasons of Housewives were just the women living their lives and maybe coming together. And I think we need to show the women being like more of them, ho- their whole selves. So like going with Wendy when she's doing things, or at least like um, if she's recording it for herself, putting it on the show for a little bit, stuff like that. That way we can see that these women are really out there doing things. I think that'd be very helpful. Absolutely. Kat, what's your final thoughts, girl? Yeah. Don't tell me Cat done went to sleep. Oh, Jesus. Been there, done that. Cat done went to bed. Well, look here. We finna go. Okay. I enjoyed y'all. This was a good little talk. I'm glad it wasn't like last year because, you know, last year we had four, five, six hour lives. We ain't doing that. No, no. That was hard on me. Okay. Now I made it through. I made it over. Thank you, Lord. But um, no, we ain't doing that no more. Okay. And we're not going to bed because Andrew Mack told us either. We just going to bed because we've been here for three hours. All yes, right. Sir. So listen, I'm gonna put um cat down since she going to bed. And Kai, we're gonna yeah, let you go. <laughs> Wait, Kat, you we we asked you for final thoughts and you ain't said nothing. Wait, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on. But yeah, I, thoughts, I just wish that um they would have came back with a better season. I wish they would have came together and gave us a real show <laughs> and put the pettiness behind because they're dragging the show down with all that separation and stuff, and it's not even worth it. Is it worth losing that paycheck? Because that's what they're finna give. I mean, that's what they're finna get. So hopefully mm-hmm. they are um Maybe they'll change it around next season after Andy talked to him or whatsoever because I think he's pray, uh, parading around with Candace and Wendy now. But hopefully mm-hmm. they will um, change it and give us a better show or else just take it off because it's really become annoying. It is. That's all that. It is. I agree. Well, ladies, I'm going to let y'all go on, on the bed. Kai, Good night. See you Good night. <laughs> and Kat, thank you for coming back to us before it was time to say goodnight, girl. 
Girl, I, you know I was coming back. You know I'm coming. You know I'm Katrina, right? I kind of figured, but I didn't want to switch. Call my to... name out. Good girl. Right. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right. Well, good night, good night. boy. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. So look, we here and we going to bed. I enjoyed everybody. Y'all have been a lot of fun. Um, oh, Max said you've been here, but you've been watching the replays. I can dig it. I can dig it. So look, we're going to get out of here tonight. I appreciate everybody. This was fun having the conversations. Um, if the fight goes back to the blogs and everybody and it becomes a talk of the town again, we will review it just to refresh everybody's memories. Um, but not tonight. Okay. So I'm gonna let y'all get some sleep again. I appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you so much. And y'all know what time it is. So you know what I'm about to ask you. If you did not hit the like button on the way in, please, please make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Okay. Hit your notification bell. Make sure you click all so you will know every time we go live on this good channel. Subscribe if you've not subscribed because you know we're happy to have you here. If you want channel membership and you want to put your crown on your head, make sure you hit the join button beneath the video or the membership link in the description box. Also in the description box is the link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store so you can get your crown merch and our classic black and gold design or our new emerald crown motif, okay? And we got the link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together and my Amazon wish list in case you want to send your girl some snacks, okay? So look, I appreciate y'all for being here. It meant so much to have you. And let me just tell you this, if no one else says it to you, good night, sweet dreams. And remember, God loves you, I love you, and it ain't nothing you can do about it. So I'll talk to y'all later, okay? Bye.